Um, it's budget time, and uh, I know we moved this date around a little bit, but we finally got a spot. And, but I think it worked out really well because I had a bit of an update uh, today from the staff at the department head meeting, and I I must commend the staff for putting a, a document together that I think is pretty self-explanatory, and and uh, we're going to work our way through it uh, and uh, go from there. And appreciate all the hard work you've done so far. And when we when we're looking into this, we're we're not concentrating on an, an actual number at this point in time. And some it'll come out in the actual wash here that it's interesting. Last year we we had numbers floating around, and by the end of the time, it the number was quite a bit lower than we had anybody anticipated because there's so many issues from now until we actually get all the numbers set in March that we have to be a little careful of a number. Things county changes things and how we, they do certain things and whatever. So. A lot of the numbers they could put out there to the papers and whatnot to the press uh, tend to be a number that isn't the final number. So I think uh, the treasurer is going to talk a bit about that today, but we've got a good start. It's nice not coming in at like 22%, like I know some places do, and say let's work her down from there. So I think we've got a pretty good start at it and uh, turn it over to the staff to uh, run us through it. And Bill, I uh, think you want to take it over. You have some resolutions there to. Oh yeah, sorry. I actually got the real stuff here. Move by Deputy Mayor Faulkner, second by Councilor Turton. The Town of Council convenes in the committee of the whole to conduct budget deliberations. All in favor? No. I, and if nobody has any peculiar interest, conflict of interest, would hope not. <laughs> the budget. <laughs> that the budget. <laughs> well, that'd be easy. <laughs> okay. If it's Get okay. the afternoon off. Yeah, you're there. <laughs> it's okay with Council. I'm just going to switch the camera over so. The uh, um, presentation will show up instead of you guys. So. Oh, great! Good man, David wore a tie for nothing. So we're not, are we, we, are we off? We are we off now? Today? So no. I can t take the tie off. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> oh, there we go. oh, no, we're still on. We go. Do that. I don't know. The camera's on the right thing. Mm. Okay, so as far as I can tell, the camera would be on that. No, oh, there's Mike. We hung on. We hung on, Mike. But <laughs> you knew I didn't want to miss it. yeah, we have. Yeah, I knew <laughs> you were coming. Be here, anyway, right? we have. We've just heard my uh, small speech, but I'll send you a copy later. <laughs> You're just the right, right time for everything else. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Bridge, members of the Council. Our budget theme this year is Bringing It Home. Um, we have our two dates this today, of course, and then Thursday, January 11th. It's always nice to start out our budget with a couple of quotes. Um, they're at the bottom of your uh, presentation there. So we've had the Mayor's introduction. The uh, uh, Treasurer and I will tag team on a brief presentation and then we'll go through budget to budget each item and generally we don't give a long presentation as a staff to you most of it's in the sheets but we're here for questions and answer, answer any concerns you may have typically we get through the operating budget today and then we will do the the budget update in January and then do the capital budget but I guess it depends a lot on how many questions you have and so forth. Uh, you've seen this slide many times, but there's a couple differences in, in the strategic plan section. What you'll find in the report and what we'll be bringing forward to you is that in 2018, we should have a public meeting on our strategic plan. And that's just, to, <coughs> excuse me, get some feedback moving into 2019 and the new council. When we talk about bringing it home in the budget document, what we mean is bringing home the framework of what we've been operating under for quite some time here, and that's the provincial framework, and then the framework of council, obviously, which has uh, not changed dramatically in the last two terms, and, and ha even has some people who've been on in the term before that. So uh, I think staff is imagining that in in the net in 2018 there could be some changes that come forward either at the provincial level or at the staffing level here 
that could uh, alter how we oper operate. So we're bringing home this sort of last budget as a way to uh, bring home a, a reasonable approach to budgeting for Minto that carries on with the programs that are in place. Uh, the official plan follows under the strategic plan and the point that we want to make in there is that under new provincial planning policy we cannot review the county official plan or change any of our growth patterns until 2019-2020 but uh, you directed that we start that work now and uh, the first draft of the Clifford secondary plan was presented at the public meeting in November and we hope to have a first draft of the Palmerston secondary plan uh, sometime in early in the new year. And the other change to the slide is we've added the succession plan for 2017-2022 into the list of specific planning documents and uh, that is a new document that we talked about in council in closed session and then we had an open session right later on in 2017 but uh, part of the change that we're talking about, it will occur in the staffing level, and we'll refer more to that later on in some of the future slides. And then down at the bottom of the slide is the departmental business plan. So each department has a business plan that's done in Word. It shows the pluses and minuses to each budget, and then behind that business plan is a specific spreadsheet with the detailed budget information on there. Just a reminder of our vision and miss mission. Friendly, safe, affordable, family-oriented rural community built on a foundation of respect, volunteerism, and prosperous business, and sustained by people who value neighborliness, fairness, and inclusiveness. And mission is our cost-effective and responsible local government through superior customer service, internal stability and efficiency, and promoting responsible economic growth, healthy lifestyles, and respect for the natural environment. So we always keep that in mind when we're bringing budget forward to you as well as the 98 strategic actions in the plan. And that slide shows you a breakdown of them by department or functional area. And then down below, um, in the last part of that slide, we see there's 40 short-term type goals, 21 medium-term, and uh, three long-term, and then 34 kind of ongoing actions that we follow. When we reported to, the, to you on the strategic plan back in 2015, we reported we were about 40% on the accomplishment side of things. <clears throat> and those of you on Economic Development and Planning Committee, uh, last meeting we went through with uh, the business and economic manager the status of the strategic plan and how her actions were in some cases directly related and in other cases had begun to uh, move into other areas, in particular in events and so forth. And so uh, we're going to, as a department, kind of right track our strategic plan, and that would be the purpose of the public meeting in 2018, so that when the new council starts in 2019, they'll have a document that they can take and start to work with again. Uh, they may choose, of course, to update and do their own, but uh, I think uh, the proof of, has kind of been in the pudding. That strategic plan w was written from the one done three terms ago at least so maybe longer than that so there are elements of it that go back more than 10 years and I think it's it's been a, a direct a, a pro, an approach to prosperity relative prosperity in Minto over those years I mentioned we were going to talk a little bit about our employee profile and some of the changes that might occur in the next couple of years in Minto uh, over in the top right hand corner of that slide 2016 we had a look at who was here we had 12 people over 50 four only four between 40 and 50 and then a lot of people under 40 years old working for the town which is a great thing I think it's a nice profile that you can work with the challenge that we face going into 2019 um, more so than 2018 is that um, we will have be some people who will be able to retire and that will change how we do operate, do our operations. And that was the reason for bringing forward the succession plan to you uh, to start those discussions. The the slide that's shown there shows the Canadian unemployment rate going back to the mid 60s. So you can see how it's fluctuated. Um, the yellow boxes I put on that slide, and basically that's the 20 year, the, the first yellow box on the left 
is a 20-year period where the baby boomers ec entered the workforce. That's close to 10 million people that were absorbed from our lowest unemployment rate of 2.6% in the mid-60s and resulted in our highest unemployment rate roughly 10 years later in 1982. So uh, it, it's a simple numbers game. Um, all those people coming into the workforce over that time, um, it took a long time for the um, employment participation rate to adjust to that. And then between that period in the mid-80s when uh, most of those people were employed, you, you see ebbs and flows following the, the uh, economy, basically. So uh, moving up and down as things got uh, um, better or worse economically across the country and in the world. In 2010, the first of that group turns age 65. So where we've in the municipal field, we've seen a trickle of people for the last 10 years moving out of the uh, of the workforce. It's really going to start to hit beginning basically in 2010 and, 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 and further on. And you can see that line trending downward. Um, unemployment is now in Canada 6.3%. It's lower in Ontario, and it's shown on the slide there. And Minto, in, in my view, and, and others, is, is in full employment at less than 4%. So as these baby boomers begin to con continue to lead the workforce, I think that that number will continue to drop. That is despite technology and innovation and, and jobs that change and replaced. Uh, even so, we still have uh, it dr decreasing dramatically, the unemployment rate, and I expect it will continue to. Um, there's no doubt the workforce has changed from the early to mid-60s, but um, the numbers don't really lie, and uh, I, we perceive a, a shortage of labor already here in some trades and agricultural businesses and I suspect that it won't be long that we're in the same situation with municipalities and so that's what the purpose of the succession plan was so in our view where our budget is based on there being full employment in Minto and shortage in labor in fact there's the debt and deficit situation in Canada Ontario in total the total debt is approaching a trillion it's slowed slightly between the province and, and the federal government. Only the federal government is now showing a deficit and they are expecting to run one for another year or two. And the province is indicating that their deficit is now or very close to being eliminated. Uh, but their debt is growing. A little bit about housing unit growth, and the reason we do this is just to give some context to what we're doing. I mean, if we had a lot of if housing unit creation across the province was falling and, and unemployment was skyrocketing, I think the budget looks a lot different. So we see positive housing unit growth in in City of London. They've had their highest, according to CA, CMHC, since 10, 2007. In Minto, we had our highest housing unit creation ever. And uh, in Windsor, even, where there were issues with the economy, they've had a very strong resale market. Uh, in Toronto, we've seen signs of, of the housing market steadying um, and declining in single-family home creation, but condos continue to be strong there. Some of that is some of the legislative changes that are being made to mortgage rates and some interest rate increases. So... Uh, we know the federal federal government in particular is worried about household family debt. So uh, that may cool the housing market a little bit. We're anticipating it not cooling much here. So uh, we expect that our building department will probably not be as busy as last year, hopefully, but will be busy again. Uh, we know that the U.S. economy does impact on how we grow in Canada, and the stock market has been growing at a very quick rate, I think most are saying that there's going to be a correction. We certainly understand there's some amount of unpredictability in the United States, and uh, in particular with free trade and other domestic issues that they have going on there. So um, we're not, so as a result, we're not budgeting for huge growth, we're budgeting for moderate growth. Mentioned some of those uh, plans, 
that fall out of the strategic plan. The municipal cultural plan is one we're very proud of. We've had since 2011, and it, we're one of the smallest municipalities to have one. But it, it talks about telling our story, cultivating talent and innovation. So a lot of our youth activities are fall out of that leveraging assets and enhancing quality of place. So improving design all around our community whenever we can. Those are important and supported by the cultural plan. There are a number of values in the plan that are there. I won't read them all, but they reflect issues like vibrant and successful downtowns, conserving natural and cultural heritage, supporting artists and innovation, collaboration, things like that, sustainable economy. The Integrated Sustainability Community Plan, we were mandated to have that plan. I think that was back when we were first getting gas tax, as I recall. And many municipalities did not do one, but we did. And it's an excellent plan, and it we build on it as well. So you can see some of the values or goals in that plan. Ecological and fiscal responsibility with equal diligence. That's interesting point of view. And fo focus on health and recreation well-being and creating and retaining enterprises with low environmental impact, nourishing the land and the agricultural abundance. So it's more of an environmental approach to doing business, but we do consider those values uh, when we develop our budgets. The fire master plan in 2017, you had a presentation by the fire chief and the fire coordinator. There are some updated recommendations in that plan about increasing training, improving communication, developing a leadership program, improving health and wellness, and technological changes that they're pursuing. The core values and the mission statement remain relatively the same, and we're very proud of our volunteer fire department and its model for many uh, smaller municipalities. Recreation needs, we have some changes in that area um, that we're dealing with. Um, we talked about a master fire plan. I don't know if you recall, we did bring a two-year plan to you along with the clerk's department presentation early in 2017. And in that, we talked about developing a terms of reference for a master plan, recreation master plan in 2018, and we still propose to do that. And the new council can decide if they wish to proceed to fund that initiative and, and hire consulting help to do that work. Okay. The Harrison Kinsman pool, um, the staff have done a good job of patching it through. Uh, we may have reached a point where some of the major things we were wanting to do may not be necessary immediately but we'll see we have to continue to monitor that that facility it may and, and work with the kinsmen be, and they've shown a willingness to do that but that pool will bring forward some ideas at capital budget for more discussion uh, the central booking structure we've had almost in place for a year now mm -hmm. It seems to be working well, and we'll be talking to council in the new year about how that would move forward as far as our structure. The trailer park, uh, we had the flood in June 20, 23rd, and so that is closed. The budget reflects that, and we'll be bringing forward some drawings to uh, through the PRAC to look at what we might use that land for in the future. Uh, we bought some land adjacent to the Clifford uh, Rotary Park, John Holman Park, and uh, We'll need an expansion drawing on it as well through PRAC. And then we did buy in 20, late 2016, I believe, 2017, took ownership of the Palmerston Whites Junction Trail. And the, the Trails Committee under the Deputy Mayor has um, been meeting earnestly in 2017. And, and so the budget reflects some resources for that those activities. Just a quick reminder on the succession plan. I am going on a little, a little longer than I'd hoped, but... <laughs> Um, like many employers, Minto must replace up to eight positions in the next five years, including one or two on the senior management team. A CAO position, the succession plan should be a combined position. It doesn't have to be a CAO clerk. It could be a CAO anything, and that's what our succession plan talks about. It should be a combined position in my view. There are some municipalities that are moving away from that, but uh, I think for a municipality our size, it, it can work just fine. Uh, the size of the senior management team based on retention and merge and promote internally where it makes sense. And the recreation director is is a, an example of where one, if we did have a retirement in that area, you might take a facilities side and a recreation side and merge them into one. The departure of the public works director created a short-term opportunity for staff to move up in a year. 
Uh, you asked that we would reassess that in January, and we will do that. And uh, the budget, though, does not budget for that position to be hired in 2018. I mentioned central booking earlier. Uh, we're going to come forward in 2018 with some ideas for you on how we might continue with that structure. We have uh, some leave in that area, and we have people temporarily reassigned. But having that staff person working between facilities and recreation really seems to be working well. Um, we want to continue to train internally. Obviously, we can move frontline people to lead hands and lead hands to supervisors and supervisors to directors and directors to CAOs. That's the idea. We have a great core of young staff with a multitude of skills and abilities. This budget does talk a little bit about keeping people, uh, younger people around. We have an operator in training that's still in school and public works. Uh, when he returns from school, we would like to put him on contract in 2018 for a year, and that would take him into 2019, and then I think the new council will see some changes that would allow, find that we would need that position, uh, that person around, and uh, he's very capable, and it's not easy to find good young operators that are local, so that as well as some young people we have working in clerks and building, um, this budget proposes at least keeping through 2018. I did provide to you a confidential roster so you can see sort of when the leaves are and aren't. But uh, in any event, the budget proposes for bringing back, of course, all the people that are on leave uh, and that will be coming back in 2018 and then having these younger people around so that we can backfill as if and when people from the senior levels start to move move on. A good example of this, and that's the last point on this section, is the DWS, DWQMS coordinator. What council did when that, that gentleman retired is we merged that in with the lead hand, and then we hired it out front in, in the front line. And using that approach, merging and hiring up front or helping your front line is what the succession plan talks about. There's the organizational structure as it currently stands. We have one vacant position right now, and it's proposed that that would remain vacant in 2018. Our internal, external, and pay equity changes are shown as a line item on the summary budget page of $80,000. So we have not gone to the point of dispersing that amongst the various budgets. We wanted you to be able to see it and identify it. And if you do see wage changes in any particular budget, it could be for a couple of reasons. One, there are increases needed relative to the existing budget, or uh, there are people like the OIT that we're trying to keep in there, or there are changes because people are on leave and won't be back for, for or may not be back for a period of time. The other issue is there was a full-time position in, in facilities that you approved in 2017, and we're budgeting for that position as well. So some of the increases in the facilities side of things are reflected by that increase. Just before we go on on that, um, though, I, I, I look at the 42 and from 40 in 2010, and I, I know the previous council and this council is very concerned about FT, FTEs and making sure we, but I, I must commend you guys on this, is the fact that the size of growth between 2010 to today and the number of new regulations that have come into play that have caused us to have to increase some staffing. I think going up only two individuals um, is, a, is a pretty good track record. I don't know what the rest of the council thinks. They want to talk about that now, but I think that to me, go ahead, Mary Lee. I was just going to say also the growth that Minto has experienced yeah. is, is unbelievable. And the fact that there is only two employees added to that, I think it's going to be. So I was thinking, you know, in my in the private <clears throat> sector, if you if you had the growth we had, you'd probably have to go up a lot more bodies. Mm -hmm. So I think we've really done a good job. You have done a good job from a staff standpoint to keep that in mind that we were trying to do um, to to keep the FTEs as close as we can to to the. But I think you've done a great job, and only going up to is. You can relate a lot of those back just to some regulations that have come into play in, in the water and sewer area and whatever. So I think we're pretty flat lined it across the board. So I should mention too that we did have a, a private company and then we had Center Wellington running our yep. sewer system and that that includes 
all the operators that are now cross trained in both. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah I just and I'm glad you noticed it too, Mary Lou, because that was one of the things we we've, we've talked about since day one. I think going back to. Bean? I just have a question. Does this roster indicate casual people or people who are doing contract positions? No. No. So do we have any assessment of how many FTEs they would add up to or the number of hours that they right. work a year? Uh, those those budgeted amounts are in your budget, but I don't have an estimate on it, but I would say it's down. Yeah. If you look at the number of T4s as one of the performance right. indicators, that gives you an idea. Okay. Because you know you've got... I saw that they were down. Yeah, yeah. 85 firefighters, and then you've got your <coughs> playground and your pools and your castle. So right. I think we're down a little bit because we have converted a couple yep. of the part-times to full-times. If I may, too, it's a little hard to say. But we've been blessed with many babies and until <laughs> the last five years. Yeah, which so, helps a little bit. So it, it's 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 helps with our rec programs and things yeah, in the future, yeah. but uh, uh, it's a little hard because you have people that fill in for a year and and then and then move on. So and then we have a couple people on on leave too. So. But it helps the demographics. We need that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I just want to point that out. I sorry to interrupt you there, but um, so maybe we'll talk a little bit about the asset management plan. Um, so I would say about four years exactly, we adopted our formal asset management plan, which of course is due for another update. So citywide public sector digests have been working on this through the asset management roadmap program and that um, we're probably going to have something ready, uh, they said January, but late January, early February because it's it's time. I know we never got a, a solid answer on the federal gas tax. Originally we thought we had to have a new plan in place by the end of 2016, but that's kind of just drifted off. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we know we do have to update the plan and hopefully we'll have that to you um, in the next month or so. I think the main change is getting better data integrity. It's not like we've taken on a lot of assets, um, but we have a bit better projections, condition ratings. We spend a lot of time on that too, and um, we could always do more, but uh, it's coming along too. And and as you know, council has been very supportive, and we certainly appreciate that. But it's not just the regulations; it's the uh, getting capital grants, and they always look at it. And the reviewers really do look at these plans and make sure it's on our website. And if we have a project, and you'll see that next week, it's got to be identified as a top priority in our asset plan or it doesn't get funded. So anyway, it's uh, an ongoing thing. Unfortunately, you're never really done. But sorry. Gord, do you, do you anticipate any surprises in um, that area? Like uh, I, I know like, yeah. we rely a lot on, on these identified asset management yeah. programs and whatnot. I think this, the well, I guess it's more the unknown data. And pick one, say stormwater. Yeah. We don't have adequate data on stormwater. Um, vehicles, they're relatively easy. Yeah, for sure. You know, for it's sure. the stuff that's under the Here. ground, you know. And I know we've spent a lot of time and money on camera work, and that gets better things. Roads, bridges. I would say are relatively easy because we've got uh, specialized engineering. We've got our own in-house staff and that. Um, it's more the underground things, you know, like towards say every time you actually dig it up, you think you have the answer. Mm -hmm. and, oh, this pipe is either better or worse, and you always okay. get a surprise. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just on that too, Gord, and I know it, you were looking before I left uh, mm -hmm. FCM on the asset management. Uh, they have a, a program, yeah. a grant program. Do we apply for that? We still have hopes of applying for that in the next okay. little bit. But okay. Yeah, and I think we kind of have the ideas. Again, stormwater is one of them. Getting better condition ratings. And um, if we see what's going on in level of service, because I know we're going to have to do some public consultation, but again, the regs haven't been spelled out, so those are probably the top priorities for, for that. And I and I think the other big thing with asset management and and uh, Mary Lou, I think you'll attest to this is it's great to have the plan. It's just the upkeep of the plan and the actual amount of hours that you have to put in uh, that we know we have to put in to get it uh, uh, on. And that's why I was hoping with the FCM program they've got yeah. a, where we could apply for and we talked about yeah. some of that uh, um, computer. Uh, that's right. Groups yeah. where we can actually when we go out and we we end up doing a say a storm 
Oh, I always oh. get this. I always get it mixed up. Is it a waste? Or what is it? Storm? There's sanitary and storm. Yeah, but what, what's, what's the catch basin? Uh, we oh, have yeah. hmm? catch basin or manhole. Manhole, yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to get uh, Bill to give us an explanation on that because he always like, has that yeah. uh, confusing on me. <laughs> but uh, but that type of thing, if we, yeah. if we do that, then the guys can put it right in the system because, again, it upgrades our, our yeah. overall asset management. So we know we've got 20 years left on that That's new right. one. Um, that that's very important, I think, yeah. to get it reasonable. And getting the GIS module up and running exactly. requires a lot of just what you're saying. You maybe have to. We, we've got a vague idea where the pipe is, but with an so when, when GIS, I was, you'll when have I was at FCM and I talked again the other day, mm -hmm. those they're they're looking to give that money out. So yeah. hopefully, sure. because they they understand that with a, without a good asset management system across the municipalities, our ability to Go to the province and to the feds and say we really need these monies for mm -hmm. for this infrastructure. We have to we can prove it with those yeah. asset management plans, which which before we had them we we could just guess, right? We didn't know for sure. That's right. Yeah. So and just looking at your overall tax dollar, you know the taxpayers write one check and it's to the town of Minto, but uh, approximately those are maybe slightly different. But education has been trending down. We've been trending up a bit, and the county's been roughly the same in the last few years. And uh, again, what the mayor alluded to in his introduction um, last year, I think was an extreme example, but we came along, we set a 3% increase in our levy, and we kept that. But the assessment on education, the, the ratios and new assessment classes, like we've never had that. I, I think I've said before, Janet and I did that calculation six times. There were so many things. So we ended up with a 1.1% increase on an average home, even though council and staff really hadn't done anything different, but just as the mechanics of the calculations came through. So well, that was my so concern. So it's a precautionary, yeah. My concern was it went out in the paper as a 3% increase because we until we get the final numbers, yeah. And this is why I hear, you know, certain townships will announce their budget increases mm -hmm. in January. They have no clues if that's the final mm -hmm. number. That's as it right. turned out, it wasn't the final number. Yeah. Ours was one. Yeah. And, and, and so we've yeah. we got to be a little careful when that's we right. look at these numbers just to make sure that that's, that's not that this is just no. a start. We, we, have to, we really won't give you a final number until we have, after our budget meeting, that we have open to the public. And, and even, even then, then we're, we're even close. We're, yeah, we're the lower tier. Yeah. We're governed by the upper tier, and it's generally April before the tax policy. And, I, and I, so. I, have, I have expressed that concern mm -hmm. at the county level and said to them, to, and I know they have some reasons why it seems to be late, yeah. but could they not get that done when they do their January thing? Could they not set their actual percentages of where they're going with everything just so we don't get caught in this thing where we're trying to set a budget. We're trying to be reasonable and say that we're going to take and flow through some of that money. And as you say, there's 47%, 37%, 16 So mm -hmm. what the final number is, and I know we don't like to use blends, but at the end of the day, it's just one taxpayer. It's one actual dollar that you have to put on it. But, right. but if, if we wanted to make sure we're doing our infrastructure and doing that and we want to do a 2 or 3% increase to do that, and I'm then we sure. end up with a 1, mm -hmm. Here we are. I, I don't know. I and, just, yeah, it's true. And there's where we spend our tax dollars. You'll notice that water yeah. and sewer are not there. Um, so public works is a, a huge part of it and uh, economic and Admin is basically everything that doesn't follow in the other parts. And uh, fire and recreation, they're usually about the same. One will be up one year, down another. And, and uh, that's basically where the tax dollars go. David? Yeah, the, the breakdown on the tax dollars, mm -hmm. when you look at the 16, 47, 37, that's, uh, that's us. We're, we're pretty well all the same in uh, Wellington County. How's that compared to? Here in Perth, Bruce, like are, are they? Are we all pretty well? The same? Um, not really, no. because it's what the counties do. Um, like Perth County, they don't do like the landfills and the child care that way. Wellington does. So yeah. it, it depends. Not like lower tiers are basically the same. The biggest difference in the lower tier do they have water or sewer, and uh, you know it doesn't affect the tax rates, but. It really affects the amount of people you have, and often you have people that are in public works are doing some other things too. So okay. it's the complexity, and what we say, Hanover versus Minto. Hanover, one town, roughly the same population, we're three to four of everything. So well, and and yeah. and again, if you look at Hanover, which you have to be careful with, is Great County. Mm -hmm. Hanover has their own policing. Yeah. 
So you've, it's very hard to difficult to do that. I, from a county standpoint, though, I can t point out the fact that we're we give the least amount of money to the county in all the townships mm -hmm. in the lower tiers. The, yes. the lower tiers, and it's all because of assessment and different things like that. But but if you were down in Erin or in, in Pushland, you're in the 60s mm -hmm. that the county gets and they get to keep. So it, you have to understand that it's it based on, on certain things like that. And that gap has been widened. And they don't have the same infrastructure too. Yeah. So it's really hard to really, really do. And, and the county one is really, really hard because I say Perth, I think Perth again, mm -hmm. North Very Perth, different. they have, do they have their own policing? I believe Correct. so. Through OPP, yes, they, they have do. to, they, yeah. they do their own policing. So they're, they're but totally. But not landfill. They operate child care. But and child care and other things. So the Perth County. Yeah, yeah, Wellington so. County has, when I look at overall counties as far as budgets, mm -hmm. um, because again, we have the, we do the social services for Guelph as well. So you have to add that in. But it's a $200 million budget. If you look mm -hmm. at some of the other counties, their budgets are in the $90 million Yeah. Because they don't have all those other services. Yeah. So it all depends where the dollar. I mean, a lot of soft costs. Yeah. Yeah. And here, high level, our uh, Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund, which Minto is very dependent on, um, we've done very well for the last six years, and then this year it went down. So <clears throat> I'm going to use this illusion. A lot of the formulas and calculations are based on average assessment, average household income, and we're still a bit below the provincial average, which is roughly 250000 for a single family. We're at 224. That gap is closing. Our average household income is also increasing. So we kind of use the illusion if you're, you're on social assistance and, oh, now you're getting a job. Well, your social assistance getting cut a bit. So that's what's happening. So we're down 172000 off the top, 3.6% of our levy. So we've tried to partially compensate for that by taking um, the increase in our uh, Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund formula base, which is the one that's based on population and kilometers of road map. So it's up almost 100,000. So we've taken 80,000 of that and put it into operating for cat spaces and sidewalks and things like that. So. That has partially offset this decrease that's coming off the top. And you'll see that when you get into the detailed budgets. Just to ask a question, sure. maybe for explanation for the general, general public is, so how do you explain it going from minus 80,000, like 80 down, mm -hmm. to plus 160 and 19? Uh, well, if you look at the... Um, Figures for 19 and 20, those have been already communicated to us. Yeah, so that formula to. funding is increasing, at least until 2020, hopefully beyond. So we're kind of anticipating um, those no, increases. The only reason I ask it because you mentioned assessment. And yeah. And, and this, see, the, the assessment in that, that's those question mark ones. Yeah. Okay, the OCIF, right. it's more kilometers okay. and all that. So okay. we know there's okay. not going to be a huge change. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you. Right. And again, asset management. So your asset management plan um, gives you some theoretical spending, and also you can look at your amortization. Uh, so we've done, again, very well in uh, getting provincial and federal grants in the last few years. And by far our biggest project will be the Clifford Connecting Link. Um, again, just to emphasize, Connecting Link covers the road and the stormwater and sidewalks. does not cover your sanitary and your water. And, of course, if we dig up a road, we want to, you know, replace the existing services. Or in Clifford, we, we probably need to expand the area, too, because um, Clifford is in a much better shape than it was, but a lot of it was very kind of haphazard in the in the beginning, and we're trying to improve that and make sure that there's adequate servicing for development in that too. So it's a balancing act. It, it's good to get the grants, but you very rarely get 100% grants. We have to get our share, and that's why I'm 100% confident we're going to be borrowing a significant amount just for that Clifford project. Um, we're also going to, you know, improve the streetscapes as we did in, in Palmerston and Harrison, and that's not covered by the grant. And uh, and we've got outlined some of the top projects, and uh, 
whether we can afford it, those are the, the important priorities. <laughs> And again, this is looking just in the 2018 operating budget. So the reserves column is what we have proposed is going into reserves. The debt is the debt servicing out of it. Again, not including water and sewer. Um, so the Clifford and Palmer City Arena are for the, the roofs, and, and those ones are getting near the end of their term. Uh, the large ones are, are public works, which are for various road projects, and the economic development is for servicing the land and that's had a positive spin-off but we have to put the money out up front and this is uh, a rough and I emphasize rough <laughs> calculation of what we're looking at going forward I'm hoping through the asset management plan that these figures will be refined and we'll be able to prioritize a lot better so uh, we're showing you know, these are rough projections and discussing with the department heads of what the top projects are and how we can fund them. A lot of the grants are assuming that they do come through. Funding is sustained in that too. And uh, borrowing, there's a couple of 1.5s, but hopefully in the next few years we'll be more exchanging debt, like as some 2008 ones come due, we we'll replace them with 2018s and, and things like that too. So. Mary Lou? Yeah. Um, just a quick question. So you're not expecting much of a 2017 carryover? Is that because of the I'm, I'm thinking it's not going to be nearly as, as large. Um, when it was funny. We were in our department heads. Got our last bill. I think the last bill for Jane and Anchorman. So there's one. George Street's going to be a bit of a carryover, but not too much. Um, again, more will come through when we get the capital budget. But a year ago, we had a lot of... Um, applications out there waiting to hear we only really have one big one that's at Queen Street South in uh, Palmerston mm -hmm. um, for the clean water wastewater fund we haven't even heard if that project is going to be going forward we hear encouraging signs but those due dates were all in September of 16 so we don't have that so we don't have as many projects I think that uh, well there'll be a, a few things um, you see, like on the, on some of the road projects, I think, um, take for example the 12th line, I think they had an idea of what they wanted to do and then that wasn't practical. So there'd be a few things like that, but there's not that many products. I'm, I think in recreation, it's like almost nothing. So it should be like that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> just to go through the, thank you, Gordon, and, and Gordon is the master of numbers. And uh, I think he has more spreadsheets on his computer than anyone I've ever seen. So. <laughs> the operating budget process, uh, Mayor identifies each budget by service. You discuss as in committee of the whole the budgets, and you provide direction to approve, modify, or table. And then we provide information and support. And our budget open house is scheduled for March 20th. Our next budget meeting is January 11th. The minutes that come from these meetings are never approved until uh, after we've been through the public open house. So what you uh, consider today is not final and is not approved. And the budget bylaw will likely be presented in April. And just a little refresher on how the cover sheets work. On the one side, you see the cover sheet. We have an operating budget summary. And then you should be able to link some of those initiatives to the spreadsheet behind. So I've used, uh, I think that's uh, the CAO clerk budget, so you can see where the marriage license fees have been increased by 1500 and so forth. So that's kind of how that worked, and the various totals are shown in color there. So as it stands right now, we have the budget as proposed needs to raise $234,832,000, which is under... 5%, 4.3% roughly. There is a budget summary report on your uh, agenda that will and is posted online that you and anyone else can read through. It has a lot of this information in more detail. Um, but basically, we're ready to go through the budgets by department. I should say that we're asking if we could start with public works. Hmm. And the reason is one of our managers has an appointment and our one of our other managers has been up since the early morning hours. <laughs> so we'd like to 
try and deal with those first. So if we could go to page 203, which is the water treatment and distribution budget, and maybe Wayne could come up. Page 203. Better. We have four water systems. You're all well aware of where they are. We have a budget for overhead. We have budget for each system. And in your chart or in your information, there's a summary chart at the end that gives you information on reserves of capital and debt in the water systems. But most of the trends are in the right direction. So our overhead costs are moderating. Um, our, in, our net contribution to reserves is increasing. Our expenses are relatively stable in Heal the systems. Away. What's the title? Your water head, treatment and 11? distribution. Is it number 11, water treatment and distribution? Yes. Got it. So okay. were there any questions on those the water treatment budgets? Those have to be zero operating. Yeah. Um, by law, um, and also we just renewed our uh, water system approval uh, last month, and we were successful in getting our accredi accreditation. So that's good for another two years. And a credit to the staff, and Wayne and his group, for their hard work. And also, um, uh, this is one of the sections where you see that operator in training position remaining in. Questions? Skeeda, we uh, are we up to date on that? Uh, do we have it everywhere we need to have it? As of right now, yes. On the wa uh, water side, we can. Yeah, it's, it's an older system, but uh, it's up. It's functioning properly, and uh, Aramosa is uh, taking over a maintenance end of it uh, okay. and helping us out. So yes, right now we have Skeeda. Even Middle Pines, we have Skeeda out there, so we can see what's going on there. And, you know, the operators are able to work on the weekends from home, like operate, grab the data, operate pumps and do that. So it saves on, you know, time. There's only, they only allocate an hour and a half a day to, to go in in the morning, do it, and go back on at night to, to run pumps and that. So the skate system uh, mm -hmm. is viable and working for for the water system. For sure. Really? Just in regards to water rates and, and that, would that be when I asked this question is, um, you indicated in here that there may be an increase in water water rates. How are we doing now? Can you just uh, expand on that a little bit? Sure, <clears throat> sure, I can do that one. Um, well, if you remember, we've had kind of a long transition from flat rate to metered rates, and we took uh, quite a difference in actual versus uh, projected consumption. Right. So we did an adjustment in mid-2016. So we right. didn't do anything for 2017, but we are proposing that we get back on track with the original rate schedule that we approved back then. So basically we're taking uh, 2018 and making that where we would have been in 2017. So it's roughly a little over 4%. Um, Jackie and, and Public Works provides us some really good data and we compare with where we are, where we thought we'd be. And I would say right now we're about 95% in terms of revenue of where we were in 2015. We're supposed to be at you know cost recovery. So I think this will bring us closer. We've had those very large negative operating reserves in both water and wastewater. We've eliminated the negative operating reserve in 2017 for wastewater probably take us I think another year to get rid of the one in in water and we're kind of deferring some of the life cycle but I think if we get back to the originally approved um, rate schedule it's going to bring us a lot closer to, to where we want to be for sure. And, and four percent is not a large increase in the average household no. that'd be what forty dollars a year? Yeah and and, yeah. and what makes it a little hard to compare is too if you remember in mid-2016 we also brought in that extra tier so depending on your consumption it may not be like a flat four percent it's going to um, vary depending on your consumption and your size and meter and all that too but I think it's working pretty well I think the meters are working well you're seeing a little bit more repair work but nothing yet but uh, what their life expectancy will gradually and the reading of the money. meters is going smoothly and really well yeah, yeah yeah we're uh, as far as the meters like um, 
the style of reading that we're doing is working fine. Um, you know, we just, there has been minimal amount of meters that's just mostly the register has gone to an error and most of them get replaced at this time to the, by the company that supplied them. So we're not, you know, except for the change out of the, part of the register, it's not a big uh, impact. And have you noticed a large decrease in the leakage, the, the leaks that you're finding? Yeah, we've, uh, um, in that we have, because we've certainly filled in a lot of calls, um, you know, with all our staff um, being open to anybody that's uh, looking yeah. for what's going on at their home. We can go in, we can collect their data. We can isolate it to an, even to an hour of a day when this situation um, may have happened and so we try mm -hmm. to go collect that data take it back to them and help every um, rate payer out there in the water side to uh, help out the, on savings for themselves mm -hmm. inside thank you and and it's just um, the fact that we've got the deficit mm -hmm. almost wiped, wiped out in the in the water side and working on the sewer side i think that will really help us going down the road and i, and I guess if i look at a four percent increase in a lot of cases for a senior or for somebody that that doesn't use a lot of water, they're still going to be under what they used to do at flat. I mean, that's the nice thing, Mary Lou. They'll still mm -hmm. be better off, even though I know we got a pushback when we had a, because of the 35% instead of 25%, we had to add back in. And people said, oh, it's gone up already. Well, it was still lower than what they were paying before. So when you explain that to people, I think they understand it. So I'm, and we, we start to see, hopefully down the road, and I don't know if you've seen that yet, Wayne, but the fact that we're using our pumps less is are we seeing some improvement on the on the maintenance side of things because it's pretty hard to know right yeah um overall i'd say yes you know okay. we still have the odd pump that fails and stuff like that but, but we're getting more life out of our exactly stuff. yeah we're able to even for money savings um you know run those pipe pumps at off peak a lot more you know to try to save money on on hydro costs that way too so, so i i think it's a good news story even though we might have to get back on the, and I, we can eliminate those deficits and it'll make our treasure sleep better at night. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Wayne? <coughs> nope. Good. So sewer is next then. Okay. Thanks Wayne. Thank or sewage. Wastewater. <laughs> that sounds so much nicer. Yeah. <laughs> this one council I mentioned that we took over with our staff in 2015. Uh, we do have flow information that will be coming back to you in the new year, but we do, as mentioned in the 2018 and beyond, well, we do have improved uh, reduced flows in Palmerston again. So uh, uh, not only has inflow and infiltration work, but some of the capital work we did, for, for instance, Jane and Inkerman, mm. that street was identified in our ancient study as being all those services were old and below the water table, so there's a lot of inflow there. So it, it only has improved. Um, Mark uh, Robertson did some excellent work cameraing the Clifford system, and it's a lot better than we thought, which is good. And we've made some progress on Harrison as well. So but there is a summary chart on those systems. Most of them, again, do contribute to reserves as well. If there's questions. This is where we have also the OIT and all our staff. Most of our operators are cross-trained in both water and sewer. Mm -hmm. And you did approve a SCADA system for Clifford. Correct. Mark can give you an update on that. But I mean that's and then we have the major upgrades to the John Street pumping station as well that he's started. So right. Palmerston is our for growth in Palmerston in the long term. We will be looking at improvements to that plant over time, but in terms of flow, it's not going to be an issue here, at least in the next five years or so. Oh, nice. So what I read into that is that our new subdivisions and all this stuff, we've got capacity for our industrial park and our subdivisions in the current situation. Yes, we, we believe so. Um, the, the, the future growth in the secondary plant area, mm -hmm. And in that, as time goes forward, and given the numbers the county's given us, we will need to continue to upgrade that plant. And that will, but in terms of flow, I don't believe it will be an issue for a few years. I don't know if Mark would echo that or not. But yeah, I agree. Good. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate Mark. Uh, I think 
when when we started this project, I was, I guess, in 2010. I think even the council, Judy, I, maybe David, you remember, but I think you guys started the process before we became in council in 2010 about training somebody to do this off-site. Is that right, David? Yep. Uh, for sure. I mean, and then we back in uh, Norm's day. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the sites that he had. Yeah. And I mean, its fruition is is really good here. Yeah. I mean, we, we have control of our systems. We have the people in charge of them, and we don't. Have, we're not relying on somebody else to. And the infill and infiltration is. I mean, that that started a long time ago, and it's really, really doing all that building and stuff going on in Palmerston wouldn't be happening right now. With, if we didn't get control of our systems, and it's a big, uh, it's good. Our, our people, our people, are looking after our systems, and it's good. And I think that goes back to the this council before this council and before that that they recognize this, and we've seen some neighbors that that didn't recognize it or didn't want to put their hands in their pockets. And uh, I'm a firm believer if, if if you own a facility, you look after it, Mark. If you're renting it through Aqua or whatever, and they're doing the services, it, it it's more of a rent for them. And they, and I think the preventive maintenance thing, um, by you being there and understanding it, and kind of it's your baby, and you kind of look after it, right? Yeah. I, that one, sure. I think I think that makes a big difference, and I think we're seeing that. So I give all the previous councils a lot of credit for foresight. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting in the situation we are with the growth we have without that foresight. And as I say, a couple of councils around us, they're, they're just trying to catch up. And uh, it, it's not an easy thing. You can't do it overnight. So. Mayor Bridge, when you, when you think back and some of the stories that we, some of the uh, times when we had to tell some of the developers that uh, we have to stop growth because we're out of capacity. I mean, those were scary times. Mm -hmm. Not a good yeah, sure. message. Huh? Not a good message. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, you know, here we are on the other end of the, on the top of the ladder instead of being on the bottom. So. So, I've, I've got nothing on the overall budget, but I just wanted to bring those comments out. Anything else for anybody? No. Nope. Good. Thanks, Mark. Keep right. up the good Thank work. You. Right. Are you going back to the top of the order now? No. We, well, we, we are maintenance. Right. Or land, oh, yes. We, we can so, go whatever you'd like on the public works, but if we can stay on that one. Yeah, that's fine. No, that's good. Where are we at? Winter control? Well, well we, I was going to go to town landscape care. If that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Yep, let's keep on that. Major increase in that one is adding a machine time allocation. Just before we start, uh, are are you going to uh, Mike go out and shovel the walk one more time today? It's <laughs> just quite so, possible. Just so that like, Gene and everybody and all of us get out there safely. <laughs> I'm just having to say, for for Mike, you not only was up all night, I've seen him shovel the walk twice today already, personally, <laughs> trying to catch keep up. So I appreciate that. I think he delegated that the last time. Did he wow. delegate the last time? Okay. <laughs> I did see his shovel in his hand. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Well, the, the major increase in this budget is is a machine time allocation, which is internal. So, uh, But, I mean, we all know what uh, Paul Judge and his crew has done for our urban appeal. And uh, council created that position from some part-time uh, work, made it full-time, and that allowed us to attract and keep uh, an excellent member of staff. And uh, he ends up doing some snow plowing in the in the winter with the sidewalk plow. So yeah. it's a great uh, little operation, I think. No, I, that, that was mm -hmm. you know, that was a great move. Good win for us there. Uh, winter control is the next one. Oh yeah. So winter control, you know, we have a new operating plan for 2018, 2017, and Mike's been doing that these last few snowfalls. Um, there's some increase on sand and salt, and some other minor increases, but otherwise. It's up only fifteen thousand dollars, and this is one that you never really know what's going to happen. But we know that our 2017 allocation is pretty much used, but we do have some extra revenue, and we do have some pre-purchased sand and salt on inventory. So yeah, I was going to say we're not proposing dramatic increases in that budget. Yeah, and uh, how is the new uh, unit? Uh, working as far as the parking lots 
actually, uh, I've, I've watched the downtown quarters in the parking lots here the last few snowfall events. Yep. And it's keeping the, uh, the curb and gutter area clean. And there is a bit of spillover still in the, on the boulevard area. But as we have time, there's not near the, uh, the banks or anything in the downtown quarters. Good. So far today. So, good. Yeah. Good. And how's the graders working out? At, are you, where have you, have you using them on different roads now than you had before? Well, the, the tandem, like the plow trucks aren't going on any of the gravel roads. So it's, it's all greater. It's safer. It's all greater. So even those residents are going to see, uh, improved service in those areas and, and response times good. in those areas too. Excellent. We haven't received, I think we've only had uh, two inquiries about the timing mm -hmm. of the snow plow so far this year. Other than that, we haven't had any complaints. <laughs> Run. Can we go online and find out when you guys are out in the road plowing or right away? Yes. Uh, the patrollers have been a little bit behind getting that information updated the last little while, but it should be online by 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. At the, at the latest. Oh, it, yeah, I mean, it's early days, but it seems to be working the new system. Yeah, it, for sure. Well, you know, yeah, just one of, you're, you're working the same type of schedule you were last winter. Is that, uh, or no, is that a new no, one? No, it's a new it's, one. It's a new one. This so is the first this year. This is the new one. one. Yep. Yeah. 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 I knew there was a new one. So, there is, so there's what is the new schedule? Can so that seems to be working good yeah. so far. So, so basically, we've, we've dropped one of our, uh, our plow trucks in the township during the morning, but we've added the two plow trucks in the afternoon. So from noon until 8.30 at night, the township uh, hardtop roads are going to see that extra service in the afternoon. So can I just ask, because someone said that, you know, at 5 o'clock the plow shut down. That's, that's not the case. No. Um, but what is the schedule be, be evening no. and overnight type thing? Is there plows on the road? Not from 8.30 in the, at night until 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So there's that time lapse where there is no activity on the township plows, where before it was only from about 3 o'clock in the morning until noon. That's the only time we would actually, we only yeah. have the, uh, the, the operators available for that, for that time slot. So that's where we've added the increased out in the township for the afternoon. Okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And and I and I guess I I would like to so at seven o'clock you kind of sh should be able to go on a system and sort of see if they've been out and whatever yeah or or where we're at where if, we're at. if anybody's it, out on on the roads or if, uh, if the roads are clear do we do that on we do that on social media uh, no just on our town mm -hmm. mental website Ta town or just our website yeah. okay yeah. so I have it if I, if I may I have yeah. it up there now okay well there we are it's yeah. December twelfth. That's today. Good. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so there used to be. Uh, there, they will tend to have three or four days in a row if it's been snowing mm -hmm. yeah. on there. So they just put the so you can see air temperature, uh, road temperature, roads covered. Often they'll say all plows called in. Yeah. But you can see three thirty to six thirty is when they're on patrol. And the okay. big difference this year is that we'll do the patrol. They'll call the the group out. And then there will be a second shift of two people yeah. who will do the rural uh, main roads again and touch up some of the other areas. And we're using two less pieces of equipment. So uh, hopefully we can surplus those. So that could be half a million dollar uh, or more of equipment we don't need to replace in a few years. So I think Mike and his crew saw the plow trucks being brought out for three or four months of the year, pretty expensive units, and then, you know, not being used so yep. I think I commend them for bringing it forward we said we'd try it this year and uh, see how it goes and mm -hmm. so far so good and uh, I think it's excellent. Uh, the other thing we should know too is we're, we're all on GPS so when we have people tell us that you haven't been here or you haven't been there we know where we've been and we yep. can look it up yep. and by and large they're out and they're on the routes and if they're not in an area it's usually an equipment issue yeah David. Thanks, Mayor Rich. I, I like the word inquiries. I mean, when people phone you and ask you, yeah. and you give them an explanation and they're happy. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Most of the time. It's not, it's not complaints. And yeah. yeah. So it is a big change. Not so, not so big, but it, yeah. it's, it's paying dividends. Mind you, we haven't had that big blow yet. Have we? Not, not, not quite. But Let's not talk about it. Right now, close. getting close. We're in the middle of one. <laughs> yeah. We can't afford it before the end of the year. 
No, I, make and, it in January if you're going to have it. No, great, great job, and I think that that's going to. Oh, sorry, Jane. Go ahead. No, I know. Just go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, um, yes, we're using less equipment, but we're using it more often. Yes. So the life span of it may be shortened in that way, as far as from a year's point of view. Well, or it may be worth less when we are ready to trade it in or whatever. It's it's almost it's it's one of those things that where I'm saying if we're not using the equipment, then it's True. actually sitting and deteriorating yep. on its own. Yes, absolutely. Where we're using it more now, and then we can stay on top of the maintenance and may actually prolong yep. the life somewhat. So, yeah. Yep. It's almost harder on it when it is mm-hmm. sitting doing that, right. especially through the summer months, and that's where we were seeing that. And so, and on a safety issue, I think uh, last year we had a couple situations where we were out in those gravel roads and we had our our plows tip, yeah. and and that was another issue we had because if, if you're pushing it back with the grader, you got a little bit more control. I I believe that's well, it's that and like the the. The gravel roads are normally a little bit narrower as well, yep. so it's harder to see where the edge of the road is, and there's just not the there's not the forgiveness on a gravel road that there is on the, the hard top. <laughs> when, so. Yeah, so we had a couple situations. So thank goodness there's just equipment and nobody yeah. hurt. But yeah. uh, we kind of I think I think it's a good idea, and hopefully it'll work through it, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, and the other thing, I guess, in, in the old in the old when I say the old days, I mean few years back uh, we used to do a lot more of our road construction ourselves and and those dump trucks got used in the summertime because we do more because of the way that things are nowadays you don't do as much of that because you don't have the manpower to do it um, so that gets contracted so you're right it sits there where normally you know two or three of the trucks sit there and do nothing all summer so yeah makes sense good maybe Maybe not. You're right. Well, I was just saying, like we had our own gravel pit, so then we trucked our own gravel. We don't. Yeah, we don't have that anymore. And and yeah, uh, there was there was we used to use them, right? Things change. And Uh, but in the past, um, like several years ago, graders plowed the gravel roads and plow trucks plowed the paved roads. Mm -hmm. So I think we've just come back full back to where it was. So I guess it was a good idea then, and it's a good idea now. Yeah, I think I think it was my I think it was 2010 was the last time I remember. And Dave, you might correct me on this, but um, we did that uh, that road out by Drew, where we did the construction. I remember it wasn't Aiton Road, Aiton yeah. Road, and uh, you know. But at that time, two, two different years, and we had like our water guys could actually help out in the afternoons. We can't do that anymore. Like all the rules have changed. So I think this is a good adaption, and, and it's kind of interesting that that Judy would say <laughs> we're going back to where we were, yeah. almost in the graders doing the gravel and the yeah. Okay. Never knew that. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Good. The next budget is the machine or vehicle time allocation. This is a net revenue. It's kind of one of those funny budgets. The fewer vehicles you have, the lower the revenue. So anyway, you can see we're actually down a vehicle. I'm not entirely sure where that is, frankly, but we're one less than 2017 and 2018. And uh, as a result, this budget does it also includes the fuel and maintenance costs for those so if you look through at individual vehicles you can see uh, when they get older their their maintenance starts to increase um, but in any event this is a general revenue to our budget it's down 22,000 because of various changes it's, it's a, yeah. since 2011 I've been doing our budgets and it's one that oh, Explain all that well. <laughs> I'll take your explanation, Sir Harley. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Anything else? Trailer parks. Uh, no trailer parks. Oh, God, you got a lot on this. Trailer parks, the net revenue to our municipality. We have closed. The budget proposes and accommodates closure of Harrison, so there's a slight reduction in revenue, and then we can take some of the expense out too, so it's actually more of a revenue to us than before. The- Next, streetlights. Uh, Streetlights is uh, a zero-based budget. We levy uh, people primarily where there's streetlights nearby, but mostly in the urban areas, about 196 some thousand. And then we did an LED replacement program in 2015 where we uh, took the savings in hydro and we put some of that to reserve and we paid off, paid a company 
So we got brand new lights with a 10-year warranty at no cost to us. And we were even able to put some money in reserves. The problem is that uh, hydro increases since that time and then us buying and installing new lights has it eaten into what we've put in that reserve. But uh, in any event, it's still a good program for us. We do have LED technology and uh, we are consuming a lot less energy than we did. And uh, we expect well, the performance of the lights has been good. Uh, I don't know that we've had any specific problems with the lights themselves. Our issue is with our infrastructure to it. And those are always, uh, were always our responsibility. Yes, right. Just thought of it now, but the lights out in the, out in the country, what do we got? And There's got to be. Is that paid be for by the. Is that paid for like through the street light? Or is that. It's, it's, <clears> yeah, it's also. So. Yes. The, so uh, those people, there's like Minto Highlands and Minto Pines. Minto Pines. And, uh, Highland Pines. Uh, yeah. 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 The, the ones, yeah. yeah. So they get the special area rate the same as people in town do. And that's kind of yeah. in there. Is, there. is there not light at some of the concessions too? Like when you do Not <sighs> ours though. They're all county. Yeah. We have none that we put in. Yeah. There's a few odd ones, and funny you should say that when we had real term up, they were counting those lights, and I know Wayne was going, oh, that's not ours, mm. and, and that too. But there are these kind of unusual yeah. ones, and they're not part of our system. Okay, great. But the uh, agreement with real term is that they maintain the lights that they replaced, mm. but when we add to them, we don't put those under contract with them. We do that ourselves. Right. So that's what eats it, adds to our maintenance. Yep. Road administration. Roads administration. This budget is down uh, primarily because of the uh, removal of the director's position. <coughs> and also the change in the gravel pits reflected there. All right, the reserve. Yeah. Uh, as far as reserve contribution, we're not increasing the contribution to vehicle replacement this year. It's remaining at 200 220,000. Is that sort of anticipation of the fact that if we can get one of those trucks, if it works well, this experiment, we don't have to replace one of those trucks? And also just to try and keep the tax levy possibly well, reasonable? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but I, but, but it will help if, if this works, if one of those trucks doesn't have to be replaced, that it'll help that. I don't want. I don't want to drain the reserve. Like I think it's great that we're we're you know we've done it well with the fire department to have the reserves there, so that when we get we need vehicles, we're not we're not hitting other future councils with that a big budget. But I but I I think I can live with that this year because of the fact that I think if the experiment works, we're going to be able to eliminate one unit anyways, right? Two possibly. two possibly. So so that'll help the fact that you know we're not putting in reserves this year. Yeah. I just wanted to mention as well, when we came on board, there was no reserve. Was, exactly, exactly. So the reserve has built up nicely that mm. uh, I think one year without wood would be okay. It would suffice, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mary Lou, for that. Okay. Any other questions? Roads and sidewalks. Roads and sidewalk maintenance. This is where you see the OCIF formula amounts going in. Right. The 80000 that was mentioned. So. Just to remind you what that is, that's base funding for infrastructure work that it comes from the province. No strings attached, right. except that you got to use it for infrastructure. And I don't know if you do a report on that one. Probably Those do. Are the ones that we do this week. <laughs> so you, can, you can start on that tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, it's not many fewer strings attached than yeah. applying for a grant. So we did take out of that, and that's helping the operating. That's what's keeping right. that down. But we, our sidewalk repairs are up 30000 and some tree cutting increases there as well. Basically what we do there is if winter control is way out of whack, then we try and do less in some of these other ones. David? 30000 for uh, sidewalk repair. I mean, I think that's pretty important. Uh, we do have some old sidewalks, and we're eventually getting them to them all. 
and the ones that are pointed out that uh, that need to be fixed, that that's the ones we're fixing. So I mean, it's a good news story. Dean? I did have a question about that sidewalk repair because it says in one point here that proposed budget allocation will reconstruct less than half a kilometer. And it says that we have 43 kilometers, so it works out to be an 80-year replacement plan, not a 50-year plan. Okay. Yep. I think yeah. My math was off. You're not, oh, right. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but but having said that, having said that, no, go ahead, Mike. I have one thing to go along with that too, though, is a lot of these sidewalks do get repaired uh, during the capital. That's what I was okay. just going to well, say. Right. So like down that adds Harrison, to it, right. That was almost a kilometer on its own yeah. because yeah. of both okay. sides yeah. all the way. So yeah, and, and, so and I didn't want to. Some council go. Uh, we missed. 30 kilometers or yeah, so no. because <laughs> no I, I think these are more for spot repairs and where we know we have issues with trip and falls yeah. and things like that but we are putting when we when we do the new roads we're putting the new sidewalks in and, and that so it'd be nice actually some day to kind of figure out how many kilometers of sidewalk we have done on that basis because it, it would it'd reflect be yeah. because yeah that 80, yeah. 80 years sounds like a long time right yeah. <laughs> Mayor Bridge, one one other thing. I mean, we're we're not just uh, looking at Palmerston or Clifford or or Harriston. We're doing a little bit in each center, and I mean that's that that's a real good thing. It's keeping everybody uh, reasonably happy when they see construction in their in their little center. You hear that the odd time, but I mean, any time any time we tear up a street, it's progress. We're going ahead, and we're seeing some of those. Those sidewalks, because we want to be a walkable community. You no, know, we like putting it out to out to the sixplex in Palmerston. We, we did that. Now we've got it all the way out there. Now we've seen the big new development. When that gets ready to go, we'll be able to get it out there so people can walk from there in. Uh, it's it's working out nicely. Yep. Be nice to have a million dollars just thrown at us and we could do it all at once and come up to front, but it's not going to happen. Okay, anything else on that? No good. Missable drains. I should add that Mike will have a report at the next council meeting on municipal drains. And I'm hoping he can score our consultant to come and provide some information to Ron? Yeah, just just on that, I we know from the June twenty third situation we were gonna have some uh, additional problems with municipal drains. Is any of that surfaced yet? Minor. Sure. Minor, is that right? Yeah, no, really? Yeah. You can see, you can see that the like they are up from previous years, like repairs and stuff like that, but not from what we're really we're anticipating a lot more. Um, now, unless there's some of the property owners are fixing the, the tile blowers themselves, and yeah. they're just not reporting them right. to us as well. So we're, we're it's not as bad as we might have thought. Yeah, excellent. Because exactly. that was my question too: is if they've got got at it to look at it. Yeah, okay, good, excellent, good news. So this budget is down because we, we hadn't been budgeting for a revenue that Mike can often get. And so when we have uh, studies that we have to do, there is a, a reimbursement from the province for a portion of that. Right. So we've budgeted more revenue. Cemeteries. And there's no change to that budget. Okay. Is it, yeah, anything we're doing in seminaries, we talk would be in capital as far as any of its other. You bet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what do we got here? Candies. <laughs> the brain function. Just so uh, for, uh, for a reminder to council, we will be going to our design consultants for the three cemeteries in the new year, and you'll mm -hmm. have drawings that will vet through the public so that there's some feedback on what. But the idea is to uh, generate revenue and decrease costs mm -hmm. with something that's very attractive. Excellent. Hey, any, qu any questions on public works? Well done. Thanks, Mike. Right. Did a great job. Right. You can go rest. Now. Yeah, have some, go have some <laughs> sleep. <laughs> looks tired. We get to keep them. <laughs> if you're okay, Mayor Bridge, I, I suppose we could go to economic development. Okay. Or did you want to do building? Building. Actually, the chief building official is not feeling well. All right, chief <laughs> building. That's about three days in a row. <laughs> I think we've run them right. We got all we can out of them in 2018. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's on page 82. 
it's a slight decrease. We will run a surplus this year, and that by law has to go into reserve for that function only. We didn't dramatically up the revenue just because it's unpredictable, and we believe with the two subdivisions in Palmerston that we will have a good year again, but I don't know that it'll be as good as this one. No. <laughs> it, was, it was overwhelming. Oh, it's a great job. Any, any comments? No? Good. Right there. Sorry, just oh, one sorry. Quick. oh sorry. hang on. Hang on. I noticed the revenue increased. So is that from lending Terry to other municipalities? Uh, no, that would be more for uh, Stacy's mat leave and the reallocation oh, okay. of her uh, yeah. salary to uh, Michelle. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We can't for we can't lend them out right now. Well, that's what I wondered. <laughs> We're getting the time. Although, <laughs> do you recall we did put in a proposal to Halleck and they didn't accept it, and now they're suffering for it. Now they're suffering <laughs> for it. Thank goodness we didn't, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, really, you're right. Yeah. yeah we. It was a blessing in disguise, wasn't it? <laughs> Economic development is both those budgets are, all, are pretty close to what they were last year. <laughs> The, the borrowing in, in the economic development budget is all the land that the economic development manager bought in Ann Street. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but we're selling it. Yeah. yeah. Did we did we put the other ones up for sale yet? I have not done that, Mayor Bridge, but we oh. did close on Slide. all the ones we did. And the reason I didn't is because, frankly, there are people who are – building on them now that'll be interested in those last four lots. I know there is. The longer we wait, the better we'll do, I think. <laughs> Questions? Mm -mm. It's good to me. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Did you want to do tourism or? No, oh, yeah, tourism. Oh. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Let's finish up. Are you on call? No, <laughs> let's... Mayor Bridge, tourism is down. Oh, yeah, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Just talk, talking about housing and stuff. We're we have had our house on the market here for three months, and we it's amazing. The first question that people ask when they come in, we got it on. Uh, they when they come in, they ask, "How is your internet?" Mm -hmm. Good. Oh thank yeah. You, thank you, White Men Telecom. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, I'm telling you the number of people that are coming from um, Mississauga, Guelph, um, Burlington. I mean, we've had them from all over the place. So it's it's kind of neat. Inter internet speed is, is so important. It's always the first question. If I could point out, we need to improve it up in the rural area. <laughs> I, I can, I'll, I'll give Where's you a swift word? update next council I'm meeting. I'm coming to okay? county council here. Yeah, you you're going. Hear. I can bring, I can do one locally too if you want. I'll I'll do one no, next. It's next a problem. Big it's one. getting it's going to get there. It's just it's it's a bigger piece than you. It's a four billion dollar actual thing for rural. It's four billion. We got three hundred million. Hmm. Poor little. I'll be a yeah. pilot. Yeah, I know. I know, Gina. <laughs> tourism. Anything on tourism? See, according to yesterday, it's the gateway to your economic development. Yes. Do you that, agree on that? That is true, and I've said that all along. That I was going to say. Tourism is the purest form of economic development, and it is. I totally agree with you. Get the people and the jobs the call. That's right. And, and just on that, I mean, one of the things we saw from Roger Brooks yesterday, at, at the, he had a, did a thing on Wellington County, and we're, hopefully we'll get some good in, input from what he did in our area. The one he talked about was if, if you get the person to stay more than a day or two days or three days, and the development in Alora is hopefully opening in the spring. It's coming along nicely. And that's 150, I believe, rooms they're going to have all together. We're going to really want to get into that, and I've talked to Belinda on this, This our park, especially in Palmerston, uh, with the railway museum and whatnot. I think we can get some, hopefully some of our investment back that we've put into that by bringing that as a tourism type uh, destination when they sit when they sit in Alora for two or three days they'll be looking for those day tripping things so that 
that's what I'm hoping to see out of that and, and some of the other things. And, and they talked about um, uh, trails and a big thing. And we've, we got the buggy, buggy, uh, buggy and butter tart trail. And it was mentioned. And those are the types of things. And I think the, the farm thing, and I, and I think what we're going to see at the county level with, with Taste Real, I think we're going to see that as more of a trail situation down the road. But I think that's something we're planning on. A, that's been identified before. Yeah. Association to trails to yeah, exactly, and I think we have a great opportunity in Wellington to do that type of thing. So, and and I think that's where our tourism and our open door and getting getting people to come and visit will come really big. So, we're looking forward to that next year. Okay, anything else on tourism? No, good. All right, we're good. The so launch it was approved with the uh, or it's part of the economic development budget. Yeah, and I and I think so launch it. Uh, allocation there. other than if Belinda wants to say anything about launch it, it it's become a real success story. I think you want to maybe say something. Yeah, yeah, well, Summer was just here at the last council meeting, so you have a good idea of what we're doing there and how it's becoming more of a business uh, solution center. We're bringing in a lot of services that otherwise aren't here. We're bringing them to the community to help our business community. Uh, the training sessions, our mentors, all that stuff is going really great. Um, there's not really much else to say. It's going really well at Launch Ed, and we're proud of our little center there. And a lot of people wish they had one in their communities. And, and I think I think we can see it leveraging into more support from the county if we keep going on the direction we're going at the county level. I think when I've talked about that, where we could see our northern Launch Ed as sort of the Mapleton Wellington North spot that we that they can use to do this mentorship, and the fact that the heralds of the world or whatever that could continue to develop and grow mm -hmm. and it, it it makes a big difference if you've got and I'm being an ex banker and seeing 65% of the of small business fail they don't fail because of a, not a good idea they don't fail because of lack of effort from people it's a little, little lots of it is lack of a good business plan lack of a mentorship program or when they get to the next level ability to get some funding to move up that level these are all the little soft skills that we're giving these people through all this programming and like even Mary Lou, her when she goes and does a, something on accounting, it's amazing. That might have saved that business because it might have been going down the wrong path. Mary Lou, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. And as a bookkeeper, you, you've got to be able to give them that opportunity to grow. So this is such a great we, – we've got such a great uh, – return on our investment for this launch it and I'm, yeah, and I'm happy I to should uh, give a shout out to the chamber of commerce exactly because without their partnership this would not yeah. be possible Good point. so Good. definitely want to thank them yeah. the chamber of and I think it's worked for them as well I think mm -hmm. they feel that well obviously because they've put more money into it yeah it's a great it's a great partnership great Good. 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 okay the next one would be fire Fire! So the fire chief provides an overall summary, and then sure. there's four budgets within that overall, the administration, and then each of the stations. So overall, they're only up just need eleven thousand dollars. It's part of that increase, and you can see in the overall is the Clifford's up, but that's the Howick revenue decrease yeah. that we're anticipating for next year, and then. The other part was we increased our transfer to reserves. It's a big, another big part because, <clears throat> quick break, the cost of fire trucks has skyrocketed because of the dollar. Mm -hmm. So we're anticipating that going forward. That if we don't anticipate that now, we're going to be in trouble down the road. And the final part of that is we've included in our reserves is replacing our breathing apparatus because of the requirements of them now. The cost of them has also skyrocketed because of the safety factors. So. We have 33 SCBA air packs, and I think we look at anywhere from five to $7,000 per unit. So compared to the first block, we were two to three. So they've gone up significantly. So it's not till like 2024-ish that we were talking about replacing them, but we're trying to plan for it now and do a little bit to the time. So. Gordon, is there would be any advantage and I just if you if the dollar got say over the eighty cents or something like that, take some of our reserves and put it in a US account or or do you think you just have to it take it? It hasn't done too much, but um, if you remember we got what was our second or third last fire. Well we did pretty good on US. that. One. Remember we and, did and that. We did, we did a bit of 
yeah. currency hedging if you like to. We did a little currency hedging. I yeah. remember that. And I just yeah. I just wondered if it, yeah. because, again, you, most of them do come out of the. Yeah, you can do that. And the other thing, um, the, <laughs> no, my the memory's very good. we've had a few little windfalls and some found money. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set up a little special project reserve and okay. try and keep that separate from the truck reserve. And that okay, too, good. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. Really. I just noticed one of the tanker trucks had a very large repair this year. What do you get? When do you get to the point, or how do you decide um, when repairs outweigh the cost of buying a new one? That truck was one of our actually one of our new ones. It was only That's about right, four so years <laughs> old. Yeah, that was a manufacturer defect, but the oh. manufacturer that we bought that from went bankrupt. So. We okay. weren't able to go back on them to get that repair good. done, so that was uh, that was a, a fix. But it, it's it's very tough. The thing with fire trucks, like our tanker trucks, we'll get twenty five or thirty years out of them. I mean, like our oldest one, I think has twenty two thousand kilometers on it, <laughs> but it's twenty seven years old. So it's it, it, it's very tough to say what repairs yeah. is needed, and then before we get a new one, but. With the price going up and up and up, it's it just seems you try and get the most out of your trucks you can because it's it's so significant to replace them. Um, you'll see in the capital that we're trying to forecast and, and order early a new a truck, order it next year to be delivered in 2019 because it's about a year to build these trucks. Um, but the prices just keep going up, mm. so we're trying to do our best to get what we need, but economical for for Minto. So, David. Chris, is there no nobody builds fire trucks in Canada? There is a couple manufacturers that do. Um, there's one in Quebec. There's there is a quite a few. There's one in Brampton where we just got our truck. The issue is, um, for example, our last truck was a Freightliner tanker, just a cust or a, a commercial truck that comes out of the the states. Um, the other problem is there's not many tank builders in Canada. They usually get the tanks for say a tanker truck out of the states. Um, for pumper trucks, which our next truck would be, they're custom cabs. Um, there's no Canadian manufacturer, so the, the chassis again comes out of the states. The pump comes out of the states, so they they actually put the truck together in Canada, but a lot of the components of it are all brought up out of the states. So gotcha. that's what raises the price. Like we try, and when we get a Canadian manufacturer, but the co they manufacture it, but the components is yep. <laughs> they're all American. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any um, are there any used trucks on the market that aren't 20 years old? Like does you know have some of the bigger centers like Guelph or Cambridge or Toronto? Do they flip them sooner or they do flip them sooner? Um, a lot of them do. Some do 15. Um, the That's problem is they have 100. Good. Like a lot of the trucks in the city will have 180,000 kilometers on oh, them, and okay. they're hard miles. Yes. Because okay. down in the city they like they they're out you all go time. yeah they're out of the time and they go to the fire hall and go from zero to 90 fast mm -hmm. and they're they're really really tough miles on them so it's kind of goes to Mary Lou's point is then you get it and you're taking your chance like we've lucked yeah. out with this aerial truck so far um we found it in the states where they were going to a whole different style of truck so they got rid of it in 11 years but that's very rare that you can find that so there's a lot of cost up front but when we're keeping them for 20 25 years if you kind of take it over that time span it's really not that that's true not a big investment because we do get so much yeah. years so many years out of it yeah that's very true so okay. Okay, thanks i don't i don't think you have to go through the individual ones unless somebody wants no. to the individual no. stations no are you up with something yeah the only thing i was wondering about was this uh I thought maybe Ron Faulkner paid him to put this in here, completing a very successful IPM 2016. Is that just? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. Is that just an oops from last year and I think yeah, didn't we, get we, taken we, out? Or? Yeah. I think so. We just wanted to reminisce on that. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a wonderful event that we wanted to make sure that was yeah reminisced. Yeah. And okay. How enough said. It was. Okay. <laughs> no. Good enough. Thanks. <laughs> And now that a, you've brought that up, <laughs> yeah. right, none of that. <laughs> no, I, I do want to. Oh, you I have may, something. You have something else. Uh, that uh, the uh, emergency, uh, the police, <laughs> fire, ambulance, and whatnot uh, uh, said the way we did things in '16 was was the best way to do it. They found out the next year it wasn't just quite as good. So kudos on that, Excellent. Chief. Thanks. Hey. Moving forward.
The next one is the facilities budgets, and we begin with Clifford Arena. Oh. Is Al coming up? What page are we on? You say, he didn't jump right out of his chair. I thought I went, was a little worried about that. Recreation. Which one are we? Recreation? <laughs> You're what? Uh, I'm in safari. Uh, facilities. There we go. We're on asset. Some of these uh, <laughs> facilities budgets are up. We do want to remind you we did, you did, and we supported a new position in there hmm. in the front line. So we have so many satellite facilities now, at least three that uh, Al's group's working on. So the Clifford Arena budget is up marginally. I thought it was trails. Get to trails. Questions on the Clifford one? Moving ahead. And Clifford Parks is next. <laughs> Facilities manager allocates uh, staff resources to these various budgets. So. And there's mention in there about the borough lands that are mm -hmm. added and also the parking at the corner of Villora and Allen. And another pond that was built on Minto Road that we'll be taking over next year or so. Questions? Uh, next is uh, Clifford Ball and Soccer. It's up $373. Yep, I think we can live with that. <laughs> next. And actually, it's being used, the, the ball dam got used a lot last year, did it not? Uh, it's getting better. It's going yep. the right way. Yep. Every year. Even though we never thought we needed those lights, but somebody bought them anyways, right? Harrison Arena. Questions? De decrease in fuel and heat, is that part to do with the uh, with that stuff we did with Jim and um, you, no, you're going to no. notice that across the board. Last year, we made a significant increase in our in our uh, heating expenses okay. through yep. the cap and trade. Okay. And up till this point, it doesn't appear they're as significant as what we originally thought. Perfect. So we mm -hmm. feel comfortable lowering those. Marks. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yep. Um, just made a note here that on service measures, this is in Hairston. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, the comment that, um, and I've heard this comment before, that Saturday ice time is the main concern. Rentals are low and tournaments are not scheduled. I, I sort of feel like there's sort of, those two things are kind of uh, in competition with each other. Because, you know, if I had a if I had a team that I was trying to schedule ice time for, I might try to stay away from Saturdays because, darn it, we're going to get preempted all the, or half the time or whatever the measurement of time is for a tournament. You know what I mean? Yes. So I feel like they're they're kind of in conflict with each other sometimes. Like it's great to have the tournaments, it's great for the arena, it's great for the community, um, great for the kids. But then, yeah, maybe that does kind of. They do happen a, a majority of the time, tournaments and and it's not just the tournaments in Harriston. It's if if we do get a tournament in Palmerston, mm -hmm. the rentals flip flop. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. I guess this is yeah. the first place it was mentioned. Um, so that's it is. Uh, the areas we are able to focus on mostly is, is later on. Mm -hmm. Like, so we do try to book right. our uh, facilities, you know, from, say from 8 to 11 is safe. Sure. With all age groups. Some of them finish a little bit earlier than that, but uh, that's how we focus on it first. Yeah. David. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So, um, I mean, we talk about it all the time, and that's the, our three arenas were built in 1977, 8, 9. 77? 76, 77, 78, whatever, all three of them. Mm -hmm. How long are they going to last? What should we be doing about it? Uh, with the investments that have been made, uh, in particular the roofs, which were hopefully this is our, I do believe, our last year. Um, you know, we want to get another 20 years out of it. We've made a commitment to the solar installations as well. It should bring us some revenue in, hopefully starting next year. 
And I think this is something that needs to be addressed when we do our recreation study. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And yeah, and, and, I, and I add recreation study. And once we pay off the roofs, I mean, there'll be some hopefully some ability to put some reserves away too to look at some of the other options that would be done. One thing we did hear from from uh, at FCM uh, in in November when I was up um, was there is more talk about federal government coming across with some recreate or like recreation money. There's been a big push, especially in the rural areas, because as you pointed out, David, those are 1977, 78, 79. There's a lot of small communities out there that that really haven't got the dollars to to go out and build a seven million dollar arena. Yet that might be the way to go, but at the same token, how do you get there, right? And there hasn't been any real government big money out there for that, and because uh, we've been concentrating on other infrastructure projects, so it sounds like that might be getting a little bit freed up. So I think having a, a study started soon and getting going on a study to be prepared for when if their dollars do start flowing, that we'll have that opportunity. But it, so the other thing, the money might money might not be the issue. It's where we're going to put it. Well, look, well, there's look at, look at Cambridge. <laughs> Those are all things that have to be taken into consideration, and, and it's just not the arenas. It's recreation as a whole, yeah. Councillor Turton. Yeah, for sure. But I, I think likely the arenas are the big ticket items, and and you know likely at a crystal ball we could go from three to one. Or one and a half, or one, two. Whatever. I don't want to. That, that's a debate for the future. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'll be retired that year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, when we're going to be looking for a new arena, right now you're looking around eleven or twelve million dollars. Oh well, yeah. That's and, now. And that's that's a one pad arena. Yep. That is what we. Need. Well, that's gonna that's gonna take in community centers and so meeting rooms. We take. Four or five years down the road, and we're up 15, 16 oh, million dollars for an arena, for a one pad arena. So uh, I think Lester will, they built their arena, which is really nice, and, but they had a chance to build it five years ago, and the money that it cost them waiting to make that decision to, to move forward with it cost them five million dollars, is yeah. what I heard. A five million dollar difference. And just waiting around to make that decision to to go ahead with that. So if we're gonna either we wait and see, or we go ahead with it, you know, not not today. Is what I'm saying about. You didn't hear what the mayor said. <laughs> there was a promise, right, Mayor Bridge? Mm. You promised that the feds were going to come. Well, the feds might be coming with some money. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about a seven million dollar arena. <laughs> well, I just said I just used that as an example. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, and it's like anything else. I mean, if yeah, if we had the money, we'd build it today. Oh, right now, I can tell you right now, there, this this council could not build a twelve million dollar arena. Yeah. I mean, we I would feel very un, upset if we were spent twelve million dollars on an arena right now. With all the other infrastructure that we need to fix, but but having said that, because there's no other dollars, what I'm no. saying, Ron, but but I think they've recognized the problem that none of us, none small communities could afford it, yeah. and so therefore, if if it's like any other infrastructure, it has a life expectancy and it's starting. We've been very fortunate that that we spent some money on our units and we've got them to the point where they'll at least last for a few more years, and but I think we have to go forward thinking and figure out what we would do and where their needs are. But that's why you need a recreational study because what we think we need today might not be what's needed in 10 years as the population changes to what they want to do. I mean, how many tennis courts at one time did everybody think they needed and how many do we have today that don't get used? So we have to be careful, like, as as mm -hmm. trends go and everything else. Like, um, yeah, so I, I think that's why it has to be a master plan. It has to go right. at it and you have to look at it. And I think your your yeah. prac is looking at that, I believe, I agree. for 2018. I, the only the only thing I see, and we're we're not only losing money with, if you call it losing money, we're costing more money to to build something new. Each year we're spending what five hundred thousand dollar difference de deficit on three arenas. So if you operate it out of one, 
maybe the deficit would be down a bit. Well, and and uh, maybe we, or out of two until and put some money away for an arena. I I can I can well I could maybe get into that, but like I don't think that's the today, today's not the day to talk about it. I think we have to because I don't want to get out there. Mike, be careful what you print today, because I don't want this to turn into a, like a debate on the arena that we're going to build somewhere down the road. I know it scares the public, but I mean that's something they should be hearing. Well, I, but but it's not it's not this budget operating budget we're doing it. If you want to talk about it in in capital, I would have to say to you, you should wait until at least you start a study, because I don't know, I don't know the facts. It is and we very could be, scary, I, and I understand yeah. you being a little. I just want to finish it by saying, too, that you've got to remember in these small towns, the arena is the heart of the community, yeah. and that's that's also a big hurdle that we've sure. got to get over. Yeah, I certainly know. Yeah. I've been in the arena all my life. Yeah. Sorry to bring that up. Can we move along? Yeah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Thanks, Councilor, Councilor Church. <laughs> I'm expecting Prack to be on top of this next year. Right? <laughs> Harrison the, Parks, yeah. if I may, Mayor Bridges. Yeah. Thank you. Is, uh, only is down six hundred and eighty five dollars. So <laughs> put that okay, to our let's, future let's arena. Let's take that and put it towards the arena reserve. Okay. Harrison Ball of Soccer. Sorry, don't get me wrong. That's good. Okay. Harrison Ball of Soccer, we're good. It's the next one, it's up three oh. thousand. Yeah. Twenty nine hundred and one dollars. That's just increasing wages and maintenance. Any questions? Palmerston Arena. <laughs> I move we skip this. <laughs> oh, I just, oh, you just said that and I've just walked right out of my system here. I have no idea why I just quit on. God. Describe me right out. Go ahead. It's up there, eh? Yeah, mine did the same. I did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just timing. No. Can I just add, uh, ask you to expand on the reduced bar and soak in fees? Um, well, with the loss of the Palmerston 81s, we're looking at losing a lot of our revenue. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you're seeing is two parts, the, the revenue and the expense. So it should, to net out. It should net out to about a loss of about 14000 yeah. Okay. yeah, because they were getting the full subsidy. It doesn't kill you totally. Cause you, a, or maybe. No, it, it doesn't kill us totally, but it does... You lose a lot on the games. There's yeah. a Halloween dance, and not just yeah. with the games. They did a lot of theme nights, like mm -hmm. karaoke. Mm -hmm. They've done yuck yucks. They've done they've done some things to bring more people yeah. into the community center. So. Booth revenue, yep. a little bit. Yeah. But the, the ice rental hours are up a bit. Yeah. Even though we, I mean, that that's really amazing when you think about all the hours that the eighty ones have booked or had booked. Yeah, I think they did a good job. Of We've it. received a lot of extra uh, hours booked from the schools as well. Uh, and the guys, uh, Greg and, and Matt with Central Booking, have mm -hmm. really worked hard to try and fill those gaps. I know you know some meetings at various men's leagues and whatnot were attended uh, to promote our ice services. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the guys worked real hard on that. It's also getting it online and people can see it. And mm -hmm. Sometimes we pull up some customers that way too. Yep. For the central booking, I'm, it's nice to hear the facility manager mention that. I, I feel like it's working well. and You'll notice the rentals are up in all three arenas. Yeah, yeah, I noticed. Yeah. Good. Good. Moving in. That'll sweet. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having parks. a rush. Parks, parks. This is a drop in budget for... What do you think? Palmerston Parks. Yep. Anybody on Palmerston Parks? Good. I am actually. Maybe we should only have one park. Yeah. <laughs> Palmerston. <laughs> Sorry. Good laugh, George. I know. I know. Every um, every community has a signature park. Yeah. Ball diamonds and soccer maintenance increase benefits. That budget is up six, seven thousand. Just in maintenance and other expenses, up a little bit. I didn't look at it that closely, but yeah, here, fill, fill it. <laughs> it just said more use that you need. I'm sorry. The maintenance, like it's it's up. 
a little bit more than all the other parks? Uh, we're doing a little bit more. Uh, we're going to, yeah, we're going to add a little bit more maintenance yeah. to the ball parks. I mean, they, they're, they're they get used quite a bit. I was going to say, they get used a lot, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're six days a week. Six days a week. That was on channel. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, satellite facilities. How many, did we gain any this year? I mean, we're going to sell any of them off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's, that's, there's mention made of, of the medical clinic, and I, I'm kind of iffy as to whether I can say too much about that. <laughs> no, or not. I know. I'm just kidding. So the <laughs> medical clinic has a separate budget, but the facilities people do maintain that. And uh, we are negotiating with a new tenant. Yeah, uh, that'll help. Mm -hmm. And there is... Uh, a reduction in rent at the Harrison Library are we subleased to two organizations um, you remember the Historical Society was here asking for some assistance so this does drop their rent by 750,000 I believe 750 what? $750 a year. Is that a just a slip? Just a <laughs> awake? I think you just did that to keep us awake. <laughs> Make sure jump listening. over here. I sure woke both, me up. Yeah. Both groups are, uh, it's a healthy rent. <laughs> both groups are benefiting from that. Uh, but the yeah. Historical Society, they are aware of it, mm -hmm. that proposal. And I think they believe that helps, but I haven't heard a lot back from them. So hopefully... It well, I think uh, I think I will reach out to them on a couple other because they were we were supposed to have a follow up meeting, mm -hmm. and I I'll, between Bill and I, if you don't mind, I'll reach out and make sure that it's where they they were doing some fundraising and other things, how they're getting along. And uh, I know there's just a very important partnership and makes good use of that space. And I I think you know for the little bit of money that we put into this, we get a lot of from a, a culture and a, and a historical society and, and the cultural round table group and, oh, and our, I, I think it gets us a good, a good bang for our buck. It goes back to what we talked about tourism and everything as well. It's, it's part of where, where our heritage is and where we have to do it. And that's why I see the museum. Certainly we're going to start to ratchet that up and I think we can get some good, good people coming up and. So, that, maybe it isn't a good word. Ratchet, where is, ratchet where ratchet is the right. medical center? It's Anyways. Part of this <laughs> so it's, it's a separate well, corporation. It well, yeah. just because the, if I may, the, the, mm. the question is where's the medical center budget? Mm. Our facilities people do uh, help maintain that facility. Right. But the facility is owned by our nonprofit corporate, cor municipal services corporation. So it has totally independent budget. But you bring up a good point. We actually don't allocate to my knowledge, any expense from our budget into the corporation's no. budget, too. No. We, no. Uh, there's the odd little bill that we pay kind of through here, but we always recover it back from the corporation right, and yeah. vice versa. There was something mm -hmm. in this document about it, because I know I noted there was no rent coming from the dentist, and there was a rent coming from a physician, and I wondered where oh, they were or who they were, but where was it? I can't are, remember where I read that's it. That's different. That is... Well, uh, Yep. <laughs> we'll get the, there is a separate That's section. That's in the, the health and safety. That's health the safety. Clifford one okay. where we used to, we still um, lease to the family health team. So different medical. That we, that we pay that one. Clifford team. Library. I, I know that one, but it was, I read this somewhere. Yeah. Over the There's, three days that I've spent reading this, there was something about the, the health center in Harriston. Mm -hmm. yes. but, and it said dentist, but there's no rent coming in. I thought, how could that be? Yeah. So, yeah. There is rent coming in. It's just not showing in the town budget. It goes to the corporation budget. But I'm wondering, and I, we haven't talked about okay. the board, um, but maybe we should look at whether we can allocate some expense into mm -hmm. that. We are going to have a new tenant. Yep. I don't know, board, what do you feel about that? Um, probably it's a good idea in theory, but probably go, I, I can tell you there's a fairly small bank balance in, in mm -hmm. that budget too and there's still some um capital upgrades or repairs because that we have to do yeah, yeah that that building like we've taken it over but uh i know al's been very busy with it it it's needs some tender loving care for sure and maybe I, in the future it'd be something i think what like we're that. hoping with the building would be self-sustaining and that we didn't have to put any <laughs> any council dollars into it that it would look after itself maintenance wise and whatever we might lend it money from time to time just if we have to do a big repair like a roof that has to be done, 
and we know we will get it back in rents because there's a surplus in the rent. And if we get another tenant, we'll help again. So basically, I, I, I see what you're saying is, do we have a piece in here where we don't show any revenue or any expense to it? I read it somewhere in the budget. I think Do you know where it is. Is it? Yeah, is, there's just description in there, but there's no money. There's no it. money so that I'm aware of. We're just pointing out sort of. But I what's just want to look on. at because I know I made notes on it. I just it, can't it, find it, my notes because I can't remember where it was. Yeah, if I'm, I believe it is in uh, health, health services, which is on page. Oh, okay, health 63. services. Oh yeah, we haven't done health services yet, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not there. No, there it, but it was somewhere. I'll come across it again. Right, I well, just wondered because it, it doesn't indicate where it's going, but, but there was income coming from one part portion recorded there, and the other was zero, and uh, I was I other, was very confused. The only other tenant we have in there is the health unit or whatever. They're not really. Here. But the dentist was expanding. I will find out, Gene. Okay. On it, but, but his rent doesn't show up because it's going to the corporation right, and coming right. to yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully we don't have to put any money other than <clears throat> than borrowing from us from time to time if we have to right. do a big repair or whatever that we can then get it back from the revenue that we get from okay. it. So. We, we will be reporting on that because we are negotiating a lease with a new tenant. Right. That will be coming to council through the board here very in the new year fairly soon. Okay. Good. And Good. I think we can talk about what – whether there's any opportunity because the new lease is going to be a good lease, I think. Yeah, good. And the existing tenant has agreed to, to an increase as well. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to be in good shape once we get everything mm -hmm. done and then we have to get the repairs done. Okay, I found, so family health team shows income, but that'd be family health team in Clifford. Yes. So this is under health services. It's just way under the community gardens and stuff. Yeah, that's true. So I'm, okay. I'm going to assume that other one was good. And any other questions on the other one? Okay, and then we're going to, do you want to do health services now? Is it? Well, the trails yeah. is left. Well, trails is left. Do we have trails left? Oh, oh sorry, 300. Yeah. Yo, we better get on that. Where's the trails? Chair has brought forward a budget with a 300% increase. Yes, that's true. This mm -hmm. is a 300% increase. <laughs> oh, really bad. But ba you'll Chairs. recall it would be wonderful, though. <laughs> we did buy a piece of equipment or an attachment to a piece of equipment, and uh, this allows for the allocation of those wages. To use that equipment, remember, we spent quite a bit more on. Uh, Hiring a con contractor to do that work, mm -hmm. so that boom flail more we'll be able to use elsewhere and use on the trail. And this budget has some wages and benefits to use that here on the trails and support the other initiatives that the the committee's bringing forward. Mike Mike's not here, but I, I I've been talking to the guys about the flail mower and how many other spots they've used it, and it's really saved a lot of time and effort. Especially when they get out into the along the roadsides and places where they have to take a bunch of things down, uh, where they used to have to do that by by uh, whipper snipper and it would take like hours and hours and hours. And around the lagoons, they cut their uh, their age time down big time. So yeah, it's it should be great for both operations. Go ahead. Anything else? Roll. Good. You run while you can. Yeah, run. <laughs> recreation is next. What is recreation? Adventure camp. I'm all over the map here, Bill. I'm all over the map. It's Page 137. I got it. I got it. I got it. I went. I went up to health service. I want to get. <laughs> I still haven't found health. It's up at the top. It's under them. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I just found it. It's a huge enrollment. In the programs, and this is one of our. Yeah, it's our, our fourth year in a row where our oh. attendance attendance was up, and um, it just it involved hiring more staff and, and increased revenues. So we ended up with a, a bit of a surplus this year, um, whereas we proposed to typically try and break even on that uh, that program. And this is one of the budgets where minimum wage impacts. Yeah. Same with the pool, Harrison Pool, which is next, if there's no questions. No, no questions on it. Harrison Pool next. With respect to the pool, um, both revenues and expenses were down a little bit this year, so we're going to finish fairly close to budget. Um, I think this was the first year that I can recall in some time where we didn't get any um, 
funding through uh, grants for, for students from either the federal or provincial government. So wow. it was kind of disappointing. Um, had a pretty good track record going, and, and that got snapped this year. So that's that's part of the reason why our, our revenues were down. But uh, why do you think why did it get snapped this year? Um, through Mayor Bridge, some of the some of the grants, the way they work has changed. Uh, so, for example, the Rural Summer Job Service used to be one that we would benefit from, but it's been rolled into something different where we're no longer eligible to apply. And then for Canada Summer Jobs, apparently the last couple of years, because they've expanded the program um, funding-wise, they've received about triple the amount of applications. And in a lot of those instances, uh, municipal government were not uh, at the top of the priority uh, chart for those so that that worked against us as well but uh, just again um, we're, we're not going to budget for any subsidies next year and then hopefully we'll we'll get some reverse psychology <laughs> it was kind of a crappy summer with flooding and poor sunshine and our heater went out too so and we have to get the yeah, both repaired this year so we'll have higher customer satisfaction. Yeah. When I went in the pool in California, it was only 70 degrees. And I have a video to show you. I went in there. Huh. It was still like yeah. 15 degrees higher, warmer than Georgian Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Mayor Bridge. So have we put, and I know I should ask this in crack, but I uh, see your, or our expenses are down for heat and hydro and water. Are you predicting them? Uh, is it the solar panels? Uh, through Mayor Bridge, I, I believe so. Basically, in, in Harriston, the solar is what um, kind of held the temperature where it was for the majority of the summer when uh, the second heater went offline. Um, the other thing that really worked to our advantage was some of the work that our facilities manager, Al Carr, had, had done prior to the start of the season to reduce some of the leaks there. Um, so we, we noticed a substantially um, substantial drop in the amount of... Uh, water we'd lose overnight so those two things helped because the makeup water that we're adding isn't necessarily <laughs> warm either so um, those those two things helped help oh, yeah. this summer with uh, with the natural gas heaters going offline yeah the water coming out of the ground is, uh, is five degrees <laughs> yeah. okay good yeah Oregon uh, for the Norgan, we're proposing about uh, the same as last year, uh, hoping to put 16000 towards reserves. Um, we had a bit of a, a slow start to the year this year, but we finished quite strong with some live events and some special features. And we did quite well this past weekend with uh, Wonder, uh, that movie. So we're, we're, I think we're going to finish really strong this year, and we're, we're hoping for much of the same next year. Emerson, any questions from the Norgan? No. Emerson, great, cool. great picture. Cut the, cut the mortgage there. Palmerston Pool. Well, the weather was similar in Palmerston as it was in Harriston this year. <laughs> <laughs> Just no <laughs> flood. It's a little yeah. farther south. You would thought it was a little nicer. That's so why we don't have a pool in Clifford because it's too far north. <laughs> So, yeah, some some of the revenues were down, but the, the expenses the expenses were down too. Uh, we'll probably finish close, or if not under budget, there. And again, we're proposing just a modest increase for next year. Questions? No. Illustration. Uh, just with regard to Rec Admin, um, 2017, we received about 16,000 in, in, in funding from, from different agencies and groups in, in North Wellington. Um, this would be used for those who may not be able to afford um, things like swimming lessons or day camp registration. So that, that's something since 2013 that's um, steadily increased. Uh, so we, it was a slight reduction from, from 16, but still quite, quite impressive. And it's great to see that um, those, those who need this type of, uh, of assistance can, can get access to it and, and attend some of these programs. Um, definitely when it comes to things like <clears throat> skating and swimming, I like to consider those you know lifelong skills that uh, you want everyone the opportunity to have. Hmm. So, Gee. I'm just wondering if the um, the increase in uh, in the minimum wage, if we have enough 
there to cover that. Um, I, I realize it's over a short period of time, but and and I guess then the other question is: Are we increasing the, um, the cost of the swimming lessons? Well, through Mayor Bridge, we're um, that's something we'll we'll do at Prac in the new year is just take a look at our rates for this summer and whether or not we need to increase them uh, slightly. We've we've held the line the last couple of years. And with this minimum wage increase, it, it is going to hurt um, uh, on the expense side with um, adventure camp sure. and, and obviously yeah. the, the the pools. So that will probably be something we need to look at and just to increase the revenue in to offset the um, or to counter the increased expenses. I, I, I just with uh, quickly doing some of the math um, in preparing these sheets, I think we're going to be close in terms of what we've budgeted for expenses on wages for the for the pool and camp. Um, but probably a modest increase to some of the, the fees is going to be required, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thanks. Good, that's a good point, Judy. It's Mayor Bridge? Yeah. I think, when I think uh, Ron had it first. Oh, pardon sorry. me. Yeah, I, I, mean, I get yelled at already. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, it's all right. Almost it's getting very tense. <laughs> it's getting tense now. It's getting tense. Uh, very interested in the assistance programs. Do we <laughs> see a, a marked increase in that area, and are we uh, – are people aware of of those programs? Do we do you envision many kids out there that would like to take lessons but are not getting them because they can't afford? Them? Well, through Mayor Bridge, I, the the last uh, since, since 2014, just um, basically doubling um, the funding for direct programming. I, I think that uh, the word is is getting out. Um, certainly, if, if if people contact me and and I'm aware that there could be a, a financial need, that that's something where I can. Um, forward information along, and and it, it's great to to see them come in when they do. Um, so I'm I'm hoping for much of the same in in 18 because I still think there is a is a need out there. Yeah. Um, I, I I can't really say if every, if absolutely everybody is taking advantage of these opportunities, but um, it's it's just great to see that more funding is is coming our way. Okay. Um, just from some of the conversations I have with the different representatives, they do get a lot of requests from. From say the city of Guelph or Center Wellington, but it's it's nice when it comes up to to Northern Wellington County. Thank you, David. No, Mayor Bridge, uh, we'll let, we'll let Mr. L. Well, I know, but you were you were. I don't want to get in trouble. You were well, next. I just Ron goes just to go call. along with that, unless you're changing. But I just want to say that we have clubs and service clubs like the Lions Club. If if there's a need, uh, there's no questions asked. If uh, Matt was to come to you or send a letter to us and say, I have three uh, children that can't afford to go to swimming lessons. The Lions Club is just an automatic thing with us. We don't care. We'll write a check to that. And the same with minor ball or any of that sports. And I think the Kinsmen or the Optimist or anybody, uh, any of these groups would, and Rotarians, I'm sure. The same thing would go forward with them. Any any service club would be glad to do that. So you do jump into that a little bit, don't you, uh, Matt, to help with the expenses? Yeah. So through Mayor Bridge, um, t typically uh, I, I have received a couple of requests from uh, like local community sports groups that that are looking for funding options for say a family and. Um, in some instances, um, if these other agencies, if it doesn't pan out, then we can certainly pass their information along to a group like the Palmerston Lions Club. So we have done that before in the past just to make sure that uh, as few people as possible get missed and hopefully no one gets missed. But but what Matt's talking about is some of these other agencies, they, they know the, the needs people already yeah. because they've been asked and they also have some funding that they've got through the county and other places as yeah. well. So, yeah, no, so that's... Yeah, that's what you. Have, but that's where he's getting some of this. And blessings have been very big on on giving money as well. Like they're looking for opportunities for youth. I know they've done a couple of things with youth basketball. They did that. Yeah. Uh, with with respect to blessings for youth center in Palmerston, they've um, they've sponsored some swims at both pools yep. on Sunday afternoons. So they're they're basically free for the entire yep. summer. And um, they afforded us the opportunity to buy some equipment for the grassroots basketball program, uh, which went over really well this, this fall. So, um, it's, it's nice. Um, they like, from our perspective, they don't sponsor say a family directly. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's nice that they'll sponsor a program so that we can offer it for yep. little to no charge. Yep. Moving along. Okay. We're <laughs> good. Great. Special programs. 
just thought I'd point out we've we started tracking pickleball attendance this year. Um, it's a really popular program. We um, had 32 nights in Harrison there in the curling club, and so there was the, the overall attendance for the summer was 568. So we'll 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 look at painting those lines. I've been <laughs> taping them for the past two years just because you never know how it's going to pan out. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, four courts seems to do the trick. Um, 18 a night's great because you can have 16 people playing at once and, and after a couple of games you want a breather. So um, it's been great to see that come to fruition. Uh, we started this program five years ago and we were averaging maybe five or six a night. So it's really, really taken off. And it's it's for all ages, not just um, middle-aged adults. <laughs> what those are? People really fast. <laughs> Old find, that map. Find middle age. Right? <laughs> and, and with this, we're if you know, I just I don't know if some of the council know. We've been working. Matt and I've been working with the county as far as maybe having a uh, after school program. Uh, there's been some new changes in regulations. At one time, we couldn't have offered through recreation after school programs, but they have changed it. And we know that both Minnow Clifford and Palmerston, we've had, I don't know about the rest of the council, I've had many parents ask me about after school programs. There has been nobody able to step up to the plate. The advantage you got in places like Guelph is you have the YMCA and whatever, they, they will they will take on these programs and they've got the administration. Mary Lou and I know we work with, when you try to have a parent group do something like that, it's very difficult because they change over and there's so many regulations. So with this new ruling going through, we're, we, we haven't got there yet, but we're exploring it. Would we add it into here? Would that's, if we may have to subsidize it somewhat at the beginning until it got up and running. And I'm just wondering if, if we have to put anything in a budget, it like there's a lot of paperwork to be done yet. And, and I'll be coming back to council and we get a little bit better knowledge as to what, what our uptake could be or whatever, but. I don't know, Matt, have you thought yeah. about it? or? Yeah, and this is something where um, we're considering uh, starting up an after-school program for kids in grades 1 through 6 next fall. Um, it's not something that we've budgeted for at this time. Um, that, that depends how the conversations go with the county and, and the school board reps, if we can sort of wrap our heads around what that might look like and and what the, the school board um, considers financially. Um, if we do, we may need to come back and and and, and ask for a, a small allotment. Uh, it would be for the first four months of or the last four months, sorry, of 2018. So I, I don't think it'd be a significant amount. Um, but we are trying to, or we do have a meeting scheduled. Uh, the one on December 1st got delayed till middle of January now. So yeah, I was I was going to ask yeah. you about that because yeah. So and so really, what we're hoping to do this this program should be self-sustaining, but we might have to hire some staff. That would be monitored through us, which would I think help us overall. Like we could have maybe some staff that would be year-round staff almost, because we'd be able to use them for summer programs as well as the after-school programs. So and yeah. there could be some synergies here, but we don't know yet, and we don't know what our costs are going to be. But you, the idea would be that the people that are applying for it would pay enough money into it to pay all the costs. But but at the beginning, it may not get enough people to start with until you. That's why we may be. I'm really hoping that we do have an after school program, but did things change where the school board's not mandated to offer that program? They're mandated to if 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 they have enough people who want to apply. But what happens is they've been in the in the past, it's been too expensive for anybody to take on. So it's kind of like, yeah, they have to if you get forty people want it and then they come up with a cost, the cost is too high, I'm not taking it. Therefore, in the rural areas, what happens is nobody can run the program efficiently enough on our cost basis. So we got to get the cost down enough that I, I or somebody that's, that needs the program could actually afford to do it. I, I do totally believe there's a whole bunch of kids that are sitting at home that are eight years old and that type of thing, and hopefully just keep the door locked until I get home. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying that because there's, the system is such that you, you you know, people can't do them at home after schools and stuff because of the new rules, as you know. So I'm just worried about that. Uh, Mayor Bridge, I, I think this would be a real attract and attract attract attraction for mm -hmm. employees, employers. Yeah, and we may be able to get some funding there, from employers. There seems to be, in to Councillor Caldwell's point, uh, they were mandated to do it, but 
they have an exemption opportunity and most of the boards seem to be taking that so i think the challenge that the recreation manager is facing is getting not from the county but the board yep. the momentum to do it because if they do it in one area do they have to do it somewhere else and there may not be as many willing hosts or providers el elsewhere for them so i think that's i'm reading between the lines here that's the challenge oh, I, I, I think you're right i think they they've opened it up to municipalities but i think they're concerned that they if municipalities want to take it on and and i say that because we have the administration people right? i mean we can maybe do it from that standpoint so we, but, we, uh, when we do it we have to be able to sustain it yep. because you know these kids you can't dump them nope. exactly they're dependent on no. it. Yeah. So there, there's a lot out there, but I guess we don't have to have it in the budget for now because it'll only be four months and 18 anyways. If, if we do do it, we can come up with some funds. But yeah. I mean, my concern would be just you might have to have startup funds to, to do it because you, you'd have to get everybody signed up and it might take a while for you to get them going. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I'm good. Anything else that's special? Health and safety is next. Right. So, Health and safety. And it's uh, the same as last year. Yeah, that's good. Are we good with that? Good. Yep. And that's, that's it for it. Matt. That's it for Matt. Okay. Matt's out of here. So if we go back up to the top, Mayor and Council budget is on. We're all good with that. Forty-eight. Because I don't think we have any, got it up yet. Sorry. Anybody else left to do? So the Mayor and Council budget. Is up thousand dollars, fifteen hundred, and uh, <laughs> could be the minimum wage. Good one. <laughs> Should be. In, uh, early in 2018, you'll be setting the remuneration rate for the next term of council. We'll probably have to have two options because if the tax-free portion of your salary is eliminated which at this point it seems like it might then I think you would want to have a different rate but we'll, we'll report back on it the adjustment you made uh, for this term uh, the previous council made for this term has has reduced cost uh, you did take some heat at the time for a 35 percent base pay increase but you you have dropped your meeting cost dramatically so the I, th I think you probably hurt yourself, actually. And too efficient. I'll take uh, so responsibility for that. I didn't I mean it kind of meant to be sort of revenue neutral, but I think yeah, it, it was. ended up being less. Okay. So, right, all right, um, all right. But uh, anybody out that, that's good comments. And I I did hear it at uh, in Ottawa that they're still fighting the the. Uh, uh, we're not the only ones. That, there's a lot out west and a lot out east, a lot of smaller communities. Like I always think we're small, and then I get out there and somebody's got 800 people and whatever. So it, it is a big problem. And a lot of councils, they're having trouble finding anybody to run for council. So I, I know people think we should be doing it for nothing, but at the end of the day, there is cost. And if we're going to try to get young people in, and uh, we're lucky we have a good representation of uh, – of uh, women on our council that's not the case in a lot of places um, there's there's a big battle in trying to get more women to come run and a lot of it is I was you know if you've got young people young kids at home and got it child care and whatever if you have big meetings you got to go to and you have to do that the, the actual dollars aren't there for a lot of young people to take this up um, and have to cut into their and if you've got a young person that's making a fairly good wage somewhere and now you take the third off that, and Gord, you're going to work those numbers out for us. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that could be a bigger piece than some poor old retired guy like Ron <laughs> living on a fixed income. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. Right. Um, just quickly, I did a, a quick math on uh, $15 an hour. Yep. If each counter spent about 10 hours a week, uh, we all would make. A wealthy fifteen thousand dollars at fifteen dollars an hour without mm -hmm. with, without expenses. So you know what are we making? We're really <laughs> we're really doing it for You're below minimum nothing. wage. You're below. Yeah. Sure. So you're on commission. I mean, I, <laughs> <You're on commission. laughs> I, I, really believe, I really believe ten hours is very mm -hmm. low for what oh, yeah. time oh, we put in. Incredible. 
Yeah, 10 hours just talking to people on the street. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. Anyways. If that puts it in perspective yeah. where we're at. Getting your road fixed. I know I am. Obviously, we're not <laughs> doing it for the money. No. Oh, but I, but my concern is that we have to, and I, the idea of the change in the budget wasn't to cut more money out of your salaries. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't no. sort of happen that way, but, yeah. but at the end of the day, um, yeah. Yeah. we'll have to look at it so I think and we'll have a consultant give us some ideas I believe going well we hadn't used one. oh no we already just used we, we just used, get a we just, just get us. numbers just us we just yeah. got numbers from Ward Millette didn't we well we had actually okay. Senator Wellington had oh done. that's right because they just they paid for the freight and we just used it okay <laughs> good move I say that <laughs> and it's Ward up to Grove <laughs> word, it's, word, it's Ward up to Grove yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an old people. name <laughs> Why do I always yeah, say Ward That's what they used to be. be. Well, yeah, well, they used to be that. So. <laughs> How many years? I was in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, well, let's do the CEO. Yeah. Let's move it on. <laughs> You're up. CEO oh, clerk. So I shouldn't have said that. Then, <laughs> um, this budget is is down a bit, but there's a substantial transfer to water and sewer because of the functions that I'm performing in that area for... And we have 2018, a, based on the way you've considered the budget so far, I'm yeah. quite enjoying that work, and uh, we've, I think the staff in that area have uh, stepped up as well, and I think the department's running very well. And we have <coughs> the vaccine, of course. Did yeah. you get your uh, snow, snow plow license? Are you able to? No, I'm not that? driving okay. a plow. All right, good. <laughs> Just, as long as I feel a little safer there. I do know it. the difference between a manhole and a catch basin. I know you do. <laughs> it's an access hole. <laughs> okay, everybody good with the uh, CEO clerk? No okay. Yeah. Treasury? <laughs> Treasury. Get an orange suit. All right. All right. Treasury is taking a substantial cut. Mm -hmm. For the good of the <laughs> For the good of the group. Um, One for the team. Anyway. You're working hard there, Gord. That picture is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm orange up there. Okay, there we are. Yeah, swing bullets. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I guess... The big concern in my budget is tax write-offs, mm -hmm. and that's so I haven't changed it. Um, there's, you know, uh, uh, 2017 was our first uh, year of the four-year cycle with appeals, and there's a lot that haven't been decided by the end of the year. I don't know if we'll have that information by January, but hopefully by March we will. And uh, and and we've still got a bit of a provision for. Some of them help in that, but that's the uncertainty that I see in that budget. Um, but a lot of our, we had some pretty nasty tax situations which have gone away. Yeah, yeah, and then some, and then of course the ongoing gravel pit saga, and yeah. Minto isn't hurt as much, but no. it's still going there too. And, uh, you know, different reallocations and that too. Yeah. It's it's unusual. So anyway, just as an aside, we got a return roll on this past week, yeah. and we have passed the one billion dollars in taxable assessment for Mento. So we we're like nine ninety six last year. We were so close. Yeah. <laughs> we're over a billion. Oh. Yeah. So that that's quite. It kind of puts it in perspective. Like, uh, Remember things and do your Doctor Evil there. Yes. <laughs> yes. <ta -da>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So in 2000, and like we we do write a lot of checks. We still do. We're writing less. A little but bit. We still do. Um, and you know, I sign them, so I know we still yeah, know. write a lot of checks. Our banks are really encouraging a movement away to that, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of a two-way thing. Our suppliers have to be able to, you know, accept yeah. the electronic payments too. But that's an ongoing trend and I think it's probably an accelerating trend of moving away to fewer tax and that too. Get there. Any other questions for good? People and property. Mm -hmm. So this is where our uh, floodplain mapping initiative yep. is budgeted for and it's funded from a 50% grant and a transfer from water reserves. So oh, this one we've People's assumed property. it's going ahead. Um, we, we've had a lot of inquiries on that one. We know they're really looking at it, so I anticipate we'll know relatively soon. So um, if you recall, this is when there's like four different stages, and 
we put in for the flood mapping for this one and if we're successful and that goes well then uh, next fall we'll put in for some of the mitigation steps Sorry, Mary Lee. Bridge, um, did you budget at all for um, the flood relief payments of any sort? or no? Not really, because that's like a private initiative through the Kinsman Club, that one. Or, you mean or, us getting a grant, the grant, pay back. Yeah, pay back for our expenses. For our expenses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. So there's also the uh, provincial one, too, and we've taken, like, the big hit here. I think a lot of that will show up in capital. If at all, although going by what our oh, road okay. superintendent, they may not be that bad. But there is that one um, culvert, and that was one of our biggest aspects. Remember, I said we we're kind of on the verge where we hit the three percent or not. Right. So um, again, haven't heard yes or no on that one. But well, it we will hit the be 3%, capital. Did we? Yes. Well, well, we put in three yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, they have to. Accept Whether they'll, they'll accept, accept it, it or that's not, that's right. what we have. To. Okay, but in this current budget, budget there's nothing. No, not okay. for that. So it would be a nice It'll thing be, to yeah. be a windfall, a nice if, we windfall if it happens. Yeah. Mayor Bridge, I did speak to Spencer Sandor at a at Bruce County. Actually, we did a little, fire chief and I did a little presentation up there, and yep. he said that he had no questions on ours, which is good. He said. And he had hoped we might hear before Christmas, he said, but more likely it'll be in the new year. Okay, good. Nice. This budget also has your new animal control agreement. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where is that dog? That dog is in our... <laughs> in our work shed? <laughs> yeah. Works department. Yeah. Whose dog was that? Well, he's he's one that's been con kind of notoriously loose in uh, Hairston, so... Yeah, I forget. I did, yeah. Is that the one we that have quite a good relationship with him friendly. now? Yeah, he, like, he, like, he <laughs> likes to live out here. Like, he does. Yeah, he's, 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 to my knowledge, he is not aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah Who does he honestly? belong to? What, yeah, what, what kind is he? Oh, King Corson. Oh, King Corson. Oh, is he? The bylaw enforcement officer was unable to capture him, but this chief building official did capture him. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, I was going to say this is the notorious oh, one that the Cam couldn't dog. capture. <laughs> I don't. He hasn't been back since the summer, so I hopefully he's he's all right. Uh, under control. Mary Lou. Uh, for you, Mayor Bridge, I noticed our dog licensing revenue is up substantially. Is that because we're getting more dogs being licensed, or both? Have we our put the fee up quite a bit. Too. So our, in fact, our revenues were well above our cost. Mm -hmm. But now we're we we've improved the service. We believe it's a better service for our people, our people and the dogs that they own, and so the budget accounts for that. But that's why it's so high. We went from twelve to twenty dollars a year or two ago, last year, I guess. Okay. Oh, sorry, machine. I'm Judy. Hi. Uh, <laughs> this is Judy. This is Judy. This is Judy. Judy. Um, must, we've been going for so, three hours um, at a break. I'm in on holiday show. So that's true. Uh, it's too much sun. Um, so a couple of things. Um, in the uh, what is this? This is the administration. Um, so in, in with regards to the land rent, and if I do have a conflict this would be the spot so uh, to be openly transparent Perfect people I think uh, we do rent uh, the Harris Industrial Park uh, land but the question I have is the Harrison Industrial Park chambers part there um, every year we seem to put in seven hundred dollars it's not there and that, then we never collect it and I see we've put in twenty eighteen seven hundred dollars again and we're not going to collect it because we rent that to um, Marquette. Yes, thank you. So I don't know why we just keep putting that in there. Well, maybe is that if that's a revenue. They 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 are paying us, so yeah, I they're paying. We us may not be just posting an account at that account. Okay, but we didn't collect it in 2017. Or we didn't record it, right? We had maybe oh. <laughs> record, right? the wrong Anyways, you might want to check up on that because that looks funny there. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, mm. this is under this is the donations. This is under facilities and recruitment. Sorry, are we there yet? No, we're just about to go there. Go. Okay, sorry. 
All right, I was trying to find it and I lost track of where we were. Okay. So health I'll services. hold this thought for one second. Health services. Health the services. The next yes. one. Oh, I've got facilities and recruitment. I don't have facilities and recruitment. I don't either. Facilities and recruitment. Health okay, services. what is it called where the donations are listed? Because I might oh, have it. Admin? Facilities like the, and recruitment the is general? on the bottom of for people and property. Oh, is it right in the bottom? Oh, it's health services, sorry. Facilities and recruitment. It's, it's both. Like it's the department name is health services. Yeah. Okay. This is the facil uh, the uh, physician recruitment. Right. I don't know where this is where it goes. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, so I'll tell you my story and then you can tell me where hmm. it goes. Um, uh, Wellington Farm Home Safety Association makes a request every year for a donation. Mm -hmm. uh, we last, as a town, we last gave them a donation in 2015, I believe. They've been begging us to have somebody on their committee. Mm -hmm. uh, they finally have myself as a member of their oh. committee. And so um, they're, they're wondering where Minto's donation might be. That'll be under the agenda. They the might end. be able to uh, um, get that this year. They do do a lot of uh, mm -hmm. um, safety um, yeah. what they sessions for? with yeah. kids how, and so on. They do, you know, do one in a, Minto every year. Um, over, and over 300 or? I believe it's 500 yeah, so dollars, we'll but don't quote me. To, uh, See, I think yeah. what happened there, Judy, to be honest with you, I remember that when it first came, they went over the 300. Then, if they they could apply for the 300, we wouldn't see it as a as a as a council. Right. right. And they may not have thought of it, or I never saw anything letter from them or whatever. Because I, I don't. They send a letter every year. Yeah. So What's I, the name of the I, I, Did it come yeah, to me directly or to the county? Town. Is that, um, is that I'm the not one Walter Gross? Gross? Yes. Yeah. I just assumed they were getting the 300. To be honest with you. Do you see it? When I asked you to go on the committee, yeah, that <laughs> well, that's so what their that's what their treasurer's report shows that we have been not donating. Okay, well, we can certainly. Maybe um, they haven't asked for it. If you, if they I'll can give me, yeah, yeah, they send a letter every year. Yeah, but oh, yeah. The, yeah, and I don't think there's an amount, if I recall. Oh, that, and that always makes it a little. Yeah, what do they want? Do they want yeah, a lot? what do you want to do? Yeah, because so we haven't been giving them any money before. Ah, uh, I know we have, I've, but I don't know if we did have in seven. What's the What's the committee again? Wellington Farm Home and Safety Association. Safety. I'm sure we approved That's something we earlier this year for Wellington Farm Home and Safety, and I thought it was seven hundred dollars, but. I'll check we have in the past. Anyways, can we look into I'm that? I'm sure yeah, we will. Please, thank you. I'm sure we will. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I think it's an important committee, and, and thank you uh, for getting on that duty for us. Oh, yeah, so Mayor Bridge, at the yeah. bottom of page 53 in the spreadsheet, we have grants to others, 9,000 in total. So if we were paying it out, that's where it would show up. So we'll look and find we'll out. We'll look and see. Okay. And if they – yeah, go ahead, Jean. Um, I had a question. This is back on people and property. Mm -hmm. I just had to find all my little notes here. We have at the bottom total revenue 53000 from September year-to-date actual, but our budget next year is for 185. And I see there's a $66,000 yes. donation and other revenue. Where That's the federal. That's the flood mapping. Okay. Okay. And no. the seventy thousand transfer from reserve, so I'm assuming yeah, that sixty six for the flood mapping and four thousand for trees for mental. Okay. Because trees for mental, the expenses are in that one. <coughs> well, it's and down. It's yeah, the expenses there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We never had a budget for those before, be, so we've applied, and if we don't get those, then we won't get to yeah. spend the money. But <clears throat> so for the solar, the fit four, which yep. is just in progress, and mm -hmm. the first. Money's flowing in from this location, so I just estimated revenue of thirty-five thousand because okay. I think we hope it'll be fifty, but okay. eighteen will be a transition, and we put the whole thirty-five back into reserves. But we did say we'll try and put four into the trees for Minto. So mm -hmm. I just—it was a big jump, like it tripled, and I'm thinking, okay, what, what, yeah. where, where are we going there? Yeah. Yeah. So it's taking out of reserves and assuming we get a grant because it's a fifty percent grant. All right. All right. Anything else? Good. So then you're on to facilities and recruitment. It's down slightly. Where's where, where is this one? That's the physician, physician oh, recruitment. Physician, That's yeah. page 
This is 59. where you saw your dental mm-hmm. health services. Oh, it's still under <laughs> health, health services. Health services. Right? services. Yeah, there's nothing in there for dentists. Yep. Gotcha. The community gardens are in there. Yep. Yep. It's one where if you go right down to the page, there's the dentist and then yeah. there's the family health team. But I didn't realize it was two separate buildings. That's your last one. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Giddy. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Do so, Maverick, wind up. Our next meeting is January 11th. At that meeting, we will have an update to the operating budget. Yep. Hopefully, we we don't have increases, but maybe we'll have a decrease or two. Who knows? But uh, and then we'll have a capital plan for you to approve. But I appreciate the feedback we've received. And is yep. that at the same time? Is that at 1:30 as well? Yes. yes. Okay. Because I think there was a time zone issue. Because I think mine said 6:30. My calendar appointment, and I was I like, oh. Is it 1:30? It's 1:30. 1:30 would be. 1:30 would be good. Okay. Uh, January 11th at 1:30. Ron, just just uh, to all the department heads, CEO White and Treasurer Duff, uh, this made it really and this made it easy. Thanks for all the work you guys do yeah. on the budget Thanks. because uh, uh, truly, truly is easy for a layman like myself to understand this. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm, yeah, we all I appreciate. I feel it. like we should um, be. Drilling down more or finding more to ask about, but it's like it's so simple. Well, yeah. and I think and they it, do it's, all their homework up front. Yeah, yeah no time kidding. it comes to us, it's a complete no kidding. And, and in fairness, this has been a learning curve for all of us over the last uh, two councils, really, when we started off. Yep. You know, um, I think uh, Mary Lou, uh, we sat in with Gordon and with Bill, and we worked out as much as we could. So this is this is getting easier, sort of, for us because we're. We understand it too, so it's a lot easier for us to know. And if, if we do to drill down, certainly going up. And yeah, I, I, as I said at the beginning, I think the staff do a good job of preparing themselves for this, We're not coming in with 22% and trying to figure out where we can find a hole. And uh, so we keep working towards it. And uh, and I, you know, we really appreciate the effort. All right. A bit of a smile if you guys don't. Yeah. Mind. <laughs> yeah. No paparazzi. Move by Councilor Dirksen, second by Councilor Anderson. The committee of the whole community of town, middle town, town of Mental Council. All in favor? And then I have moved by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Call. The Council of Town of Mental adjourns to meet again at the call of the mayor. Thank you very much. And we'll see you at my place between 5:30 and 6.